Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome to, yeah, the first realism overhaul stream that I've done in over a year. I think the last one I did was last October, last November, so it has been a really long time <laughs> since I've done, like, an RO RP1 stream, which basically is where my channel all started. It was how my channel got big anyway, so it's been a while since I've done something like this, but I thought... I'm not going to release a Kerbal Gets Real Redux episode today, so what I wanted to do instead was come into the Kerbal Gets Real Redux save, which I am in over, over there right now, and uh, start working on a lunar lander design and, yeah, the rocket that's going to send it to the moon, because it's something that I need to do, because I'm actually at that point in the save now. I'm at 1965, and I need to design it, because I need to build the launch complex to actually launch it, and it's going to take a while for that to be done, so I thought, yeah, Let's get building it, and I'm trying, I'm going to try not to spoil any of the series as well, because obviously this is quite a bit further ahead than what has happened in the series so far. I think the last episode that released was 1956, so there's been like seven years, seven, eight years that I have not shown yet in between the episode that came out last weekend and what I'm doing right now. So it, it's, yeah, I'm... I'm we're just going to mainly stick in the VAB and try and test and fly some designs. We're not going to be doing anything other than that in this live stream, but because I really don't want to spoil anything. But hello and welcome everyone. Can't believe they made KSP in real life. Hello again. Hello, Loki Baker. I saw Shadow Jeb. Shadow Jeb. <laughs> Shadow Jeb. <gasps> It's like Jebediah Kerman, but he makes mods now. I saw Shadow Dev, I saw Chill Guy, hello, welcome, welcome. Is it evil AI or benevolent AI? Dun dun dun! It's what, 1967 crew moon landing. I'm not sure if I'll get it in 67. To get it built up and done in two years might be a little bit ambitious. I would like to beat history. I'm, I'm going to try and go for at least 1969, but I'm also going to try and see if maybe we can maybe go for 68, but I, I don't know. I've picked up the program for Crude Luna now, so that is definitely something that I am working my way towards, but I'm not sure if I can get it any earlier than 68. It's going to be tight. Programs and launch complexes makes it so much harder to beat historical dates, like so much harder and I think there's probably as well I've, I've kind of faffed around a little bit in the beginning of the 60s doing stuff maybe I shouldn't have done which I'll cover when I get to those episodes but yeah I thought this would be a good live stream a good RP1 live stream to come back to anyway here we go let's um let's come to this screen so we can actually see what I've done so I was planning on building this entire thing on the live stream, but I had a few hours this morning and I was just like, well, you know, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get working on it. So at least something is done by the end of today. And I've uh, I've come up with something so far, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be the final design. Like right now there there is a lot that probably needs doing with this, but it is a very basic one crude lunar lander. And I say basic, I've I've started adding detailing, I've started adding greebles onto it, like we've got loads of little sticks and rods that are coming off of it, and this took me far too long to try and design. Uh, we've got kind of like deflectors for the RCS, and yeah, it's, it's, it's looking somewhat designed, but it, it probably could be a little bit better. 69 viewers, nice. Hello, Y Mandarin. Hello there. Hello, uh, Ajoy Rockets. You are a bold one. <laughs> I'm still sick, by the way, so um, I, I was very ill on the stream yesterday. Uh, I am a little bit better today, but I, I think streaming twice in a weekend when, when I've got a cold probably wasn't the best of ideas. But like I said in the stream yesterday, last week I did nothing for my channel. I, I took a break, didn't do anything. Today, and like... And because of that, that meant that there was no videos coming out this weekend. And I, I wanted there to be videos coming out this weekend. Why a single seat lander? Um, to save on Delta V, I want to make this as light as possible. Right now, my lander is 11 and a half tons. It is quite light. Um, the LEM, I think if I compare, is about 16 tons. But this is also going to be using Hydrolox. I have a Hydrolox engine here. And this does mean I need to wait until 1969 Hydrolox rocketry in order to fly this. Is that the Kerbal Gets Real theme music? I think it is. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's, uh, it's going to be difficult. I know someone said on the live chat, can I do some sort of autonomous rover that I'll be able to land on the surface? And maybe, 
But at the moment, what I'm trying to really do is go for something completely lightweight. Because I don't want to build, like, a massive Saturn V-esque rocket. Because that's going to be really expensive. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that before 1969. Hello there, Kanasa. How are you? I am quite good. Except for the fact that I'm ill. And probably my voice is going to go over the course of this stream. I probably shouldn't speak so quickly. Is it a mod you're using for the UI colour? Yes, it's called... UI themes? I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's something I only picked up yesterday. I've updated this save, I've updated the install, there are new mods on here. Well, not new mods, but I've updated a lot of the mods, like uh, RSS Reborn has now been completely updated, um, and it provides a lot more optimization, which should be really good, because I did have to run everything at half-resolution textures in order to make it run well, and now I don't think I have to do that anymore, which is fantastic. Z theme. Z theme is the actual UI, like the, the actual theme that I've got, but I think there's a other mod that changes it, so the Z theme is the kind of like colours that you get, but there is a base mod that you need first, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure, something like Z theme. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it is, maybe I'm getting that wrong. They made one in real life, but it was in like 2009. Wait, multi-launch lunar complex. I, I think that's what I am going to do. That That is something that I am definitely considering trying to do is rather than launch this in one, maybe launch it in two. And I think what I will do is I will launch the crew on top of a return capsule and an orbiter on one mission and then on the second one what I will have is this thing here which is going to be the lunar lander and also the transfer stage like the TLI stage and the lunar capture stage and maybe design it like that. Alternatively with this design, which is going to be using the Hydrolox engine, I have a feeling that I might actually need to do this all in one launch because I don't have the MLI capable of leaving this in, lun in low Earth orbit for a long duration of time. Like, the fuel will all boil off if I use this Hydrolox engine. So, if I use this design, I might have to do one ginormous big rocket. But it might be a little bit lighter than the Saturn V, we'll see. Smaller Saturn V, maybe, maybe, maybe. Said theme is an add-on to UI change it. Yes, okay, yeah, that 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 was it. Oh, I'm 6'2 and my voice sounds much deeper than normal. <laughs> like, absolute. Oh, yeah, I, I think my voice doesn't sound like it normally does when I do uh, my voiceovers for videos. And when I when I have streamed before, I do sound a, a little bit deeper than usual. LEO refueling. I probably won't do any refueling, but I will do a little bit of low orbit construction. But I think before we get into any designing, I kind of want to fly this and test this and see if I can land this on the moon. Because I think this is pretty much all ready to go. I don't think there's anything that I've forgotten, and I I'm really curious to see how this uh, throttleable RL-10 will actually work. Will it, will it work as intended? And obviously, like, this is looking pretty bare bones at the moment. I do want to see if I can colour this in, make it, maybe make it look a little bit nicer, slap on some conformal decals, but I want to get this seen, uh, I want to see if I can get this tested, if this works, and then I also want to try the lunar module descent engine variant of this, which will put it up to about 16 and a half tons um, and see which way I want to go. And that's what we're going to do. Sustainer type architecture with Hydrolox core plus upper stage lets you get more to TLI with less on pad mass. I probably will do that kind of um, like design, kind of like almost like an SLS design where it's got the, the one massive sustainer core stage and then you've got like the, the two boosters that get it off the pad rather than like three stages, which is gonna be like what the Saturn V was like. Anyway, uh, let's simulate this and see how this works. I don't think I've forgotten everything, anything. I've got food, I've got water, I've got oxygen, I've got life support to hopefully last the Kerbal in there for a while. I've got docking ports or pocking doors. I've got deflectors, I've got science. I, I think this should be okay to just see if this design can land on the surface of the moon. So we are going to go for the moon. We're gonna orbit at about maybe 100 kilometers. I'll go for that for now and see if that's a, a decent sort of altitude to go for. I'll put the inclination up at maybe about 30 because I reckon that's what I'll be coming in at. And we will do it now. We'll, we'll, we'll give this a go and we'll see if this works. 
Is it RP1 Express install? Yes, I am using RP1 Express install for this, but I do have additional mods as well. I have Principia, I have Scansat, I've got RSS Reborn to make everything look super pretty. Uh, the, there's quite a few additional mods that I have added, near future construction parts for some nicer looking trusses and also better solar panels. I've also got Space Station or Station Parts Expanded Redux for more space Stace? Stace? Spation parts. Space station parts, because I think that's going to look really cool later on down the line in this series when I start doing, like, bigger space stations and stuff like that. I think that would be very nice to have those parts. Best drum to build guitars to- best drum to build guitars to? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did see that. You're building a guitar. That's really cool. Um, like, I, I, I have I, I have never built a guitar. Wow, it's the game is freezing. I'm freezing. It might be... Yeah, there's a little bit of lag there because the game's uh, being a little bit funny about loading this in. Um, did, did, did the stream die? I don't know. Did, did stream die? It might have died, but I think it's... I th yeah, yeah, I look like I'm coming back now. Um, yeah. I've never built a guitar, but you know, I do, I do I do have guitars in this room because I do love playing guitar <laughs> and singing. It is ah ah go back on the stand. Oh god, no! Why did I do that? There we go. I think that's uh, I think that's fine. It's not going to fall over. <laughs> it's good. Happy New Year, mate from Australia. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, it's New Year's Eve. Uh, I saw someone say, um, "Let's go to map and out." and it will fix the blur. Um, I saw someone say in the live chat that it was that it was New Year's and what did I do for my New Year's? I, I'm, I'm still in New Year's Eve right now. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've not... I'm still in 2023. Some of you in 2024, you you time travellers in, in the east of me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. It's still 2023 for me, and my plan... Hello, Rekha! Wow, thank you for the donation! Luna Pancake! Pancaker, happy new year, Karnasa. One day you're going to make me an espresso. Thank you very, very much for the donation. I need to... Um, yeah, right, so... Last weekend, you gifted me 20 members. The weekend before, I think you donated a, like a large amount. Um, you, I, I need to give you, I think you do have the role on my Discord already as being a kind of like patron and member, but I, I am gonna include you at the end. Like on the end screen of videos, I will definitely uh, start. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn the music down a little bit because it's a little bit loud. Um, I'm going to start including you when I say thanks because you, I, I think you might be one of the highest donations on my stream now. <laughs> it's great, it's great. But thank you very much. And anyway, yeah, I was talking. Um, so what I all I'm doing for New Year's Eve is after this live stream finishes, I'm basically going over to my parents with my girlfriend. My sisters are going to be there. I think we're going to be playing some board games. It's going to be great. Uh, I'm not going to be drinking because I'm going to need to drive back home, but it's, it's going to be... I, I love board games. I love playing games with my family, so that's what we're going to be doing, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm... Uh I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that. But anyway, let's see whereabouts around the moon we are currently. Um, so this is a really bad time to come landing because, you know, it's like a half moon. We've, we've got the, um... Sea of, uh, is that Sea of Serenity? Sea of Tranquility there, and that's the Sea Crisium, I think. Uh, so yeah, so this is the Oceanus Procolarum, or the Ocean of Storms. Uh, so this isn't the best of times to be attempting to land on the moon. And you can see I am playing with Principia, so everything looks, uh, everything looks pretty, uh, pretty interesting. We get noodly orbits, which are always fun. Is that a UI mod? It is a UI mod. I have picked it up. I picked it up last night. Um, in preparation for this stream and in preparation for future episodes of Kerbal Gets Real Redux. Gold, Mr. Von Kerman. Breaking. Australian man discovers time zones, realises he isn't in the same year. <laughs> Real Cal Girl decides how much national budget Karnatsa gets. Exactly, yeah, well, we've got quite a bit of budget in this so far. Well, not really. My, my budget has been pretty tight this entire time. Anyway, everything looks super yellow to me because of these glasses. I, I don't know if you can see them, but they are very yellow tinted. It's like the entire world has got jaundice or something. Uh, <laughs> or, or maybe that's just me. Maybe I just have jaundice. Something that could actually happen to me because... Oh, God. Oh, no. Why, why is the throttle on already? No, 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 no. Anyway, um... 
yeah, because because diabetes is fun. Liver failure, not not the one. Right, let's uh, let's give this a go. Let's see if I can land this on the moon. Uh, we have communications. We have connections. Oh, we bounced off a relay. No, 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 we're not. I do have a relay around the moon. Like like this is kind of <laughs> all spoilers for Kerbal gets real redux, I guess. Um, th there's lots of things landed on the moon, including the far side. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we've come quite far. There's, uh, there's all sorts of things in, like, geostationary orbit and, yeah, but uh, avoid looking at that. Avoid looking at that. We don't, we, we don't want to see that right now. This is, this is just a, uh, a design stream where we're going to be attempting to land on the moon. Anyway, um, we're going to come to Principia and I need to change my plotting frame. Wow, Ash19256, thank you for the $5 donations. Would like to point out that there does not appear to be a Kerbal Gets Real channel on the Discord, which complicates wanting to bring up longer form topics. That is a very good point. There was an original one when I did the old series. Um, thanks for the donation, by the way. Uh, but there isn't a new one yet. I haven't actually done that. And I've been thinking about doing that for ages. And then just kind of like the... The For All Kerbal Kind one doesn't really get used much, and neither does um, Farewell, but then those series haven't been kind of active, whereas Kerbal Gets Real Redux has been releasing every single weekend, so maybe it would be a smart idea to put that. Um, after this live stream, I will I will do that. I will, I will make a Kerbal Gets Real Redux uh, Discord channel on my Discord. But if you don't know about the Discord, hopefully there's a link in the description this time. If not, there's a link in all of my other videos. Uh, go check out the Discord. Hey Kanasa, what mod makes the GUI look like that? Um, I think it's called like UI Changer and someone pointed out earlier on it's Z Themes is the theme that I'm using for it. Anyway, I want to go to Moon Centered Inertial. I want to change this to Surface and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna start trying to land on the Moon. Uh, I want my landing info up, which is over... This is very funky music. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Right, we want not landing guidance, we want landing info. So uh, I don't want settings. So I know actually where I'm going to be landing. Um, how many relights do you have on the lander? 20, I believe. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, so there's 19 remaining because I accidentally used one already. Uh, and yeah, this does have quite good throttle ability. So I am hopeful that I should be able to land this quite well. Although this RCS might need to be a tad stronger because that really is not <laughs> moving me around too much. Um, last night I made a Buran Pathfinder thingy in Realism Overhaul and I hated it but loved it at the same time. What, what, like, so was it kind of like Pathfinder and it had nuclear engines to, to get it to space and then go on? But it, it was kind of like Buran in the fact that it had jet engines so once it comes back into Earth's atmosphere it can fly around on its jet engines, like like being all like, oh, look at me, check me out, I'm a space shuttle. But no, wait until I get down, I'm a plane now. Like, what are you? Who, who is the, the it's, a, it's, it's like a bit of an imposter, really. First can't ask the stream, this is awesome so far. Hello, Scosh, welcome to the stream. I hope you are, <laughs> I hope you are enjoying it. I seem to be a bit full of, uh, more full of beans than I was yesterday. I, I did not have many beans in my system. And uh, it was probably because I was really tired. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit more awake today. And uh, yeah, which which certainly helps with the whole streaming thing. Hi, Veos. Hello, Veos. KSP2 looks so good now. It, it does look. The moon has gotten a lot bigger. I, I say that. But uh, I know Cheese might not be in the stream today. They were in the stream yesterday, but Cheese has been working on. And some of the really talented models for KSP2 have been working on making uh, rescales of the planets in Kerbal Space Program 2 already, which is absolutely fantastic because we're, we're, we're already getting to the point where it's like early stages of RO RP1. I, I didn't play RO RP1 when it was first conceived. I, I was quite late to it. I think I started in about 2018. But I know early versions of RO and RP1, look, all, all they did was like rescale the... Oh God, where am I? Rescale the planets... Um, up to 10 times and, and it's, it's like when when she's when I saw this on discord when um, Yeah, she she posted some images and I was like this looks like how RO and RP1 first started And I'm really excited for this and what she's been doing with the uh, Where's my crew capsule mod, which is what I was playing with yesterday when I was streaming yesterday 
There's, there's like Muna impactors and the sounding rockets. There's, a, there's the sounding rocket grind in Kerbal Space Program 2. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's brilliant. Oh, hello, Cheese. You are here. I am here. I, I completely missed you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, started playing RP1 in 22. So you were even later than I was. Like, um, I, I got into it because I watched Scott Manley's Spaceships Are Serious Business series, which I think did come out quite a long time ago. Uh, but it was, yeah, I, I, I was just late to the party because I started playing KSP in 2013 and then I stopped playing it for about four years, picked it back up in 2017, discovered mods, didn't start really playing RO until about 2018. Uh, and then I started my channel in 2020 with Kerbal Gets Real. Well, that no, it wasn't that. I, I did a RimWorld, a modded RimWorld series first. Uh, which no one watched. <laughs> I do love RimWorld, but apparently I wasn't a good good RimWorld content creator. What's the UI skin mod? That is UI themes. Um, or U UI changer with Z themes as the actual UI that I've got. This 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 music coming in now is it's very epic. It's not like we're, we're coming for a moon moon landing here, so I do want some pretty epic music. So I do have the 64k Lunar Textures by Ballistic Fox from RSS Reborn at the moment. It might make the game run a little bit slow. Um, and I am really hopeful that at some point soon uh, they do add Parallax to the moon because that is something I'm really, really, really wanting. I know they are working on it and I'm fairly sure they kind of in development at the moment because they have shared some screenshots on their Discord where it looks like they do have some Parallax. Right. What's my warp? There we go. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Right, right. We need to burn. We need to go. We need to go. Like now. <laughs> that um That was not good. Right. Suicide burn countdown. Mine it yeah, we that that's going down. So I wanna I wanna point this up. We wanna point this up and get that down. There we go. Lovely, lovely stuff. Right, let's uh, try and avoid that crater, if I can. If I lower the throttle and kind of like point up a little bit, and try and keep the suicide burn count down to about like maybe two seconds, uh, that would be pretty nice. Let's uh, kill rot rather than do this. Right, let's throttle up, throttle up, throttle up a little bit more. Because I don't want that to be going down. Houston, we might have a problem. Uh, we got lost in angry birds. <laughs> I started Realism Overhaul after seeing Cosmonaut Crash's series. I also tested the old Neff's Quarterly Budgets mod, which was basically a pre-PLNLC. I didn't hear... I don't think I heard about that mod. Um, but yeah, no, Cosmo is absolutely fantastic. Like, if you don't know about Cosmo, he is uploading, I think, pretty much every day at the moment. But he was... Um, I, I used to watch his series. Um, his How Not To RP1, or his, his RP1 series on YouTube was basically one of the things that taught me how to play RP1. It was that and Nathan Kell series. Both of those series together were fantastic at teaching me how to play RP1. And I like to think I've gotten somewhat okay at RP1 now. Uh, you may you may be the judge of that, but I, I think I'm, I'm definitely not, not bad at it anymore. <laughs> I've done tutorials now. Uh, the RSS Reborn Cloud kill my PC. Reducing the texture quality does nothing. For reference, I have a 1660. Um, I know uh, there have been optimizations. There have been two optimizations in like the past couple of weeks, uh, which do seem to make the game run a little bit better for me, which is really nice. I think this will be the first RP1 series where Kanasa gets to do man landings on Mars. I, I did man landing on... <laughs> I did man landings on Mars in the old Kerbal Gets Real. Um, I, it was the very, very, very last episode. A uh, very, very last episode. Pablo, hello, thank you for the four euro donation. Hello, welcome to the stream. Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. That, is that just YouTube telling me that? I don't know if, if anyone else can see that, but thank you for the super chat. And yeah, let's celebrate. Thank you very much. Uh, why are you going at six kilometers a second? Am I? Am I? I'm going like 400 meters per second. <laughs> I don't think I'm going six kilometers per second. I know um, when I started, because I um, used simulation to get, that would be a really cool crater to land in, uh, because I used simulation to get into the uh, lunar orbit, moon or lunar orbit, this is the moon, this is the moon, um, 
uh, because Principia is active on this save, it does get a little bit weird, and I started off in, like, the frame of reference was Earth rather than the Moon. So that may have thrown it a little bit. We've got 1,412 meters per second of delta V left. Uh, th this is overbuilt. This is, like, stupidly overbuilt. Are we going up? I need surface info. Where is surface info? There is surface info. Right, what is my, my vertical speed? We're still going down. We're still going down. But I probably need to bleed off, like, a bit of horizontal speed now. Uh, because that's still, like, 320 meters per second. Right, let's, um, let's fully throttle this up and try and avoid, you know, crashing onto the surface. How much Delta V do I have remaining? 1,200. Yeah, this, this is great. This is, this is loads of Delta V. This is definitely a very capable lunar lander. <laughs> this is something uh, that I quite like. Although I really don't like this RCS. I think this RCS might have to change. Um, and be a little bit more powerful, right? We, we really need to kill horizontal velocity because now I'm almost going up. Uh, this was probably not the best of descents, but you know, it looked cool skimming across the moon, flying sideways. It's always fun when you do that. <laughs> At least that's what I think, right? Let's uh, fully throttle this up and try and land this. Try and land this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going up now. Or almost going up, right? Yeah, let's let's uh, kill some more speed. Kill some more speed. One small step for Kerbals, one giant leap for Carnassa. Indeed, right? Are we? Our vertical speed is minus seven. Let's move this slowly up. Kill the throttle a little bit. Uh, yeah. This this is looking this is looking good. This is looking very nice. We are going to successfully, hopefully, land on the surface of the moon. Let's see how far off the ground I am. 200 meters off the ground. Uh, okay, okay, okay. This is always the tense bit. This is the bit where everything could suddenly go terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. But I think I will... 70 meters. Okay, we, we need to throttle up. We need to throttle up. Oh, that was too much. 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 Oops. <laughs> um, it's fine. I've got 950 meters per second of delta V left. So, you know, I'm not worried in the slightest. That could have been better, but I'm sure we will still land successfully on the moon. This, this RCS definitely needs to be stronger. 2.8 meters per second. Uh, I can't see a thing because these glasses are really, really, really hindering my ability to fly this right now. But I think we are okay. 1.2 meters per second, 1.3, and that's the ground, and we have contact, and we are on the surface of the moon, and yeah, that was not a bad landing. Why are you going 999,999 kilometers per second? I mean, that, I don't think that's the speed of light, but that's, that's quite fast. That is definitely quite fast. I don't think I was going that fast, anywhere near that fast. Anyway, oh, and the bee kicks in. If this was real, Karnassa would have been the first man on the moon. Mechjeb would be heaven right now. I could fly this using Mechjeb, but Mechjeb landing guidance would not work with this uh, because it's only got limited ignitions. When Mechjeb has limited ignitions, it, it, it tends to just like go and fly through all of them really, really quickly. <laughs> And you end up losing all of your ignitions, which is terrible. It's 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 not great. This is also not great. The fact that yeah, the, these legs are kind of like looking a little bit weird, look, looking a little bit wonky. But we are on the surface of the moon now. What I want to check with this design is I want to make sure that when I extend the ladder and get out, this is a little bit laggy. This craft because I mean there are lots and lots and lots and lots of different pieces on it. I want to make sure that you know. We can actually use this as intended. Oh dear! Oh, well, that that wasn't intended. Oh no! Oh, oh, poor Jeff, Mr. Blue Lin. Oh, Mr. Blue is on the surface of the moon, but he has unfortunately broken his back. <laughs> Blows up your spacecraft with mind, with mind bullets. Oh, what song is that? That's um. It's a Tenacious D song. It's, um... What if you could kill a yak from 200 yards with mind bullets? 
I can't remember what song that is off the top of my head, but yeah, that's definitely a, a, a Tanaka Shius D song, right? Let's um, this is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Can I grab the ladder? Yes, there we go. This is really, really, really slow. Physical warp is uh, not doing very well here. Right, climb out. No, wait. Space, let go. Grab. Can I? Can I? Oh god. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it works. It, it works, I can get off, I can get down, I can get off, and I can get back up. That ladder is looking a little bit pathetic though. It could really do with maybe being a little bit longer, but I don't have a longer ladder. Where is the shadows on the landing legs? It's a conspiracy theory. The moon landing was faked. Look, there are no shadows on the landing legs. <laughs> It's fake. No, it doesn't matter. That's a massive simulation thing on the top of the screen. No, no, the fact that there are no shadows on the landing legs. It works. TM. It does indeed. I'm going to steal your hep hepatitis glasses. Thank you. <laughs> I had a friend and we were doing a space race with Kerbalism and Real Fuel and a few other mods and he got screwed once by Mechjeb rapid fire ignition. Yeah, it... It can screw you over. <laughs> Earth in the background. That that is a yeah. That is a pretty good. Um, where where did it go? Over there. Pretty good shot of Earth. That. Like, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Look, it's gorgeous. Wrong button. Screenshot. Where we are we going? We don't need landing leg shadows. I think I have a. I have an inkling. I think I might know what caused that. And I think. It is the fact that these are rescaled. These have been rescaled to, I think, 0.8. Uh, you can you can do that with just landing legs in a normal install of RP1. There's no twig scale involved. So I think because I have rescaled them, maybe it's not drawing the shadows properly. I might have a look when I get away from this and have a look and see if maybe, 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 maybe we can rescale them back up to one and see if that fixes it. But anyway, yeah, this works. This this is successfully landed on the surface of the moon. Now, the next thing that I want to do is see if I can get this back to orbit. And I mean, <laughs> I have 3,321 meters per second of delta V. So I, I am pretty sure I am like considering you need about what, 2,000 meters per second to get off the moon. I think 1,800 is absolute bare minimum. I have almost doubled that. Almost double that. So I think I might be all right. But this is only using the RL10. And I'm going to come and do this again in a second, but with uh, the much heavier LMDE. But anyway, which also I noticed has got more. It's got more ignitions now. It used to only have three, but now it's got 20 as well, which is really nice. But anyway, let's fire this up. And we are gonna make our way back to orbit. Now, I could have just ditched this stage and just tried to use the upper stage, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I feel like this is gonna be the safer way of getting up. Right, let's go for that. I want to see what my Apple apps is. Or my Apple loon. But I do, I would really like to land in that crater over there. That crater looks very, very cool. Uh, that, that giant one, that would be a great landing site. Mental note, try and land in that crater at a future date, because I think that would be very, very, very nice. Oh, 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 I want to use surface, I want to use surface. Can I say, don't you think using cryogenic propellant is a bad idea for long transfers? That is why I want to use hypergolics. That is why I'm using this, and I'm also going to test out a hypergolic design as well. Because by the time I get to launching to the moon, I believe I will have enough multi-layer insulation where boil-off won't necessarily be a problem, but it still could be a problem. What I want to do as well is test hypergolic so boil-off will not be an issue at all. Because, yeah, obviously using an RL10, using Hydrolox on the first stage does mean that this is going to be a bit of a problem. So I'm going to test a hypergolic. One distinct option, Karnasa, could be to make the landing legs part of a drop tank assembly so you can ditch them and empty tanks to make ascent easier. So this, this stage was never really meant to be used for ascent, so the landing legs were going to be ditched. But I just thought I might as well use all the fuel that I've got. I quite like what I've done here. That There are a lot of parts around here. Like, a lot of parts around here. 
Tell that to my Dina drill that keeps tipping over. I'm assuming Juna drill. Song name. Uh, this is Stellar Wind by Unicorn Heads. There we go. We have used that stage. And there we go. We, we have successfully decoupled. And we are hopefully going to make our way up to lunar orbit. Although this is really, really fighting against me. This RCS is not strong at all. I think these are, what, 138, 223 newtons. I want to upgrade those to slightly bigger ones. But how much RCS fuel do I have left over? I've got loads. I've, I've got loads. I, I, I could definitely get away with bigger ones. And we all love bigger ones. Oh no, it's tipping over. Every time I have to have a bit of a sniffle because of my cold, I have to mute my microphone so it doesn't sound disgusting. So if you see me kind of like going like this, <laughs> no noise comes out. That is because I have muted my mic. LME, LMAE has no gimbal. I did not know that. I didn't know this didn't have gimbal. Well, moon's broken. <laughs> What's happened to the moon? Oh dear, so we don't want to be landing there. That's, um, that's pretty cracked. That is pretty cracked. There is definitely something wrong with the moon there. <laughs> is that helium RCS not waste efficient? No, it's not. It's, uh, MMH and NTO, but it needs helium. It needs helium as a propellant as well. That's normal. Moonquake, <laughs> a glitch in the matrix. It's a cheese. Lunar hypertrain track below you. Wow, look, yeah, that, that, that's just like a giant cliff. Uh, I might have to mention that to Ballistic Fox, that there is something wrong with, <laughs> with the lunar terrain. Right, we've, I don't think this engine also has throttle, does it? So, uh, probably, how many ignitions does this have? 35, wow, a lot. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, yeah, I don't, I don't think this has throttle, so I'm gonna get this up to like maybe 70 kilometers, and once I get there, then I'll do a circularization burn, and we should be back in orbit, and then I need to test and have a look and see how the other one holds up in comparison, the other one being the lunar module descent engine. Single stage to orbit and descent, like, I did see people say that. I'm, I'm not sure, like, that it's going to be difficult with the technology that I've got. LMA is lame! <laughs> Moon is 100% cheese. This is what they're hiding from you. 100% cheese. I would have gone for maybe about 69% cheese myself. But if that's your opinion, that's your opinion, right? I'm going to cut this at 80 kilometers. There we go. 80 kilometers. And we are getting a little bit of procession because obviously this does have Principia. So, oh, God, that was a little bit too fast. There we go. Oh, now, now I am going down and that was not good. Let's go prograde real quick. Start urging this and let's fire this up. Uh, prograde, please. And hopefully we'll get to orbit. Oh, I love the deflectors. I do, I do, I do love a good deflector. A good deflector does look very nice. I probably actually do want to raise this up a little bit. Is there any cool UI in here? Oh, we do have we do have screens, but nothing else. Guys, I'm living on the moon right now. Just saw Carnassa flying above me. <laughs> See you, Cheese. Happy New Year's Eve. Thank you for coming along, Cheese. I'm assuming Cheese is leaving now. Is the proof we needed to confirm that the landing was faked? It is the seam of the two coconut shells. <laughs> that just makes me think of Monty Python. Like, they're, they're, they're riding along with their horses and they're like... What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? So my suggestion for the lander configuration would honestly be a single stage lander and using what's left in the TLI stage for orbital insertion and initial descent. Um, did I... Oh, I've overburned this. I've been too busy checking chat. Now I need to wait again. <laughs> when I am flying things, I probably should actually just focus on flying them. There we go. We'll, we'll get up to like 100 kilometers, nearly. And yeah, th this will definitely make it into orbit. 
this will be fine. And I've got like one and a half thousand meters per second of delta V left. Yeah, th th this will be fine. Right. I, I, I think I'm quite happy to not revert the flight, but... Well, I could revert the flight. It would be it would be one and the same, but I can revert to editor using Kerbal Construction Time. Brave Sir Robin bravely ran away when danger reared its ugly head. Brave Sir Robin turned and fled. <laughs> you did take the reference. Is that a European or African swallow? I don't know that. <laughs> How do you feel disrupting the lunar the lunar people? What, like the the clangers? Was it the clangers? That's an old British reference. I'm fairly sure only people who are about my age, maybe even older than me, knew who were the the clangers. Well, I think it was the clangers. It wasn't the Klingons. Uh, and there was like a felt monster that used to attack them, and they lived on the moon, and they <laughs> they had little little like kind of felt felt things yeah that, that that was definitely something i um might have to go for a minute and sort myself out because i think my, my diabetes is doing a thing it is um yeah which is why i'm drinking coke oh my god the clangers <laughs> so i'm not the only person that knew about them i'm fairly sure that's what they were called i fought in your general direction your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries <laughs> kynaster is high on rocket fuel i'm actually the opposite of high right now so um my diabetes is doing a thing so i might have to go for like five minutes and uh just make sure that i'm all right because my blood sugars are crashing i might i might sit and talk actually Rather than go, rather than doing anything, because it's going to be really hard for me to focus on anything right now, such as the joys of having hypoglycemia. Um, but yeah, rather than going, I'm, I'm just going to drink this. How build lander? Ugh, diabetes represent. My mum has it. It sucks. I've had it for a very long time. I've had it since I was two. But because I'm ill at the moment, it makes my levels go all over the place. So I've had consistently for the last two days, I've had high blood sugars, um, which which like my lovely, lovely little thing on my arm tells me. Uh, but before I did this stream, I gave myself some insulin. I was like quite high. And to bring my levels back down to where they should, I gave myself some insulin. Obviously, I've given myself too much and now my levels have come crashing down. But I have been... Like, <laughs> my blood, I say I've been really high. That sounds really bad, especially on a YouTube stream. But it's, it's the terminology that I've used, always. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've been really high for the past like two, three days because of this cold. It kind of like throws them all out of whack, out of balance. And it's because my body's not doing what it normally does. It's trying to fight off like cold and virus. So uh, yeah, so unfortunately I've come crashing down. Are those stock landing legs? They are stock landing legs. Sugar to the roof. To the roof. Am I winning? <laughs> I don't know. But one thing I was going to do. Oh, they're scaled to 0.9. I'm going to scale these back up to 1. And uh, another thing that I was going to do was change this to a hyperdolic. Hyperdolic? <laughs> hyperdolic LMDE. Uh, so yeah, apparently this doesn't have gimbal. I didn't know that. I did not know that. But we're going to go for the, the Lunar Module Descent Engine. We're going to whack that in there, and we're going we're gonna to offset that in to about, to about like, there, maybe? Uh, another problem that I'm going to have with this... Rock music... Is... That the ladder is going to be really difficult to get off. Right, so if I do that, the LMDEH, and I need to remove every single tank here that has hydrologs in it. And there's quite a lot of tanks. This is made up of quite a lot of things. Uh, so we'll, we'll remove all of those. I don't think there should now be any more hydrologs in here. At least I'm hoping there isn't. I think I got them all. And um, what I want to do is make these all high pressure. I'll make these high pressure and these high pressure. And, oh dear. Um, there we go. LMDE and LMDE. That wasn't high pressure. What was else? What else was high pressure? I made something else high pressure, I'm sure I did. 
Was it, was it, was it this one? No, no it wasn't, but let's make that high pressure. And 2,400 meters per second, that's more than enough. And that's only 15 and a half tons. I could probably get away with less than that. Like, maybe, 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 maybe only like 2,200? I reckon that'll be fine, because I had so much Delta V left in that last one. And that brings me down to below 15 tons, which I'm quite happy with. Kanasa, your blood levels sound like a wrongly configured PID loop to me. I thought he was overdosing. No, no, no overdoses here. I, I really should stop building and drink this, though. <laughs> I am mayhem in a big tin shed. I'm not sure what that means, if I'm going to be honest. That, 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 that has gone right over my head. I don't have a big tin shed. I have... I have no shed. I am shedless. Laugh at this poor man. He has no shed. I don't even have a garage. I have to park my car on the street. <laughs> Another thing as well. When, uh, when, I, when I have hypoglycemia, is, uh, my, my blood sugars kind of like go all over the place. When, when that happens, is um, my brain starts saying, thinking the weirdest things. Uh, so, th th my brain thinks the weirdest things in two occasions. There, there are two separate occasions where I might go like, woo, all over the place and a bit wobbly. And one is if my blood sugars are low. And the second is if I am super tired to the point where I've not slept. But thank you, CDRSN. Welcome to Kanasa North. Thank you for becoming a member. Welcome to the club. Kanasa is a banana in a banana costume. Well, clearly I'm not. I might be a banana in a human costume. Inside my interior, there is there is a lovely, lovely, mushy, potassium-baked goodness. But on the outside, I'm just wearing human skin. It's, it's like my, my human skin layer. Uh, <laughs> if I was a banana, or I, I could be a human in a human costume. But thank you for that. Thank you for becoming a member. Hypoglycemia is not a disease. They are okay. Hypo. Um. I, I mean, a diabetes is a disease. Hypoglycemia is a symptom of diabetes. Thanks. You and Mike Haven got me into RP1, and now I'm addicted. RP1 is brilliant. I did see. Uh, Mike has been doing an RP1 series. I've watched a couple of his episodes. I think he's like on episode four or five now. Which is pretty cool. Someone else doing RP1. I've never really watched Mike before though. I only, I knew who they were, but I know they're mainly known as the person that does like tutorials for stock KSP. Um, which <laughs> doesn't really interest me because I've been playing, I've been playing KSP for so long. I don't need stock tutorials. I know he does other stuff as well, but I saw that he'd started doing RP1 and I definitely, I did um, go check out the first couple of episodes that he did. Um, but yeah, no, RP1, RP1's brilliant. RP1's brilliant. Banana in a banana costume in a human costume. Wow, we're getting to bananaception right now. It's 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 getting it's it's getting quite crazy. Thank you for the subscription, Bacon Jam. Now that sounds like something I really want. Uh, so, <laughs> one of the areas nearby where I live, it's um, somewhere called Tip Tree, and it's I don't know if it's world famous, but it's definitely UK famous for making jam. There's a company called Wilkins and Sons, and I know I've lived in the north of the UK. I've been to Bristol. I've been around the UK quite a lot, and I know that um, all over the UK uh, you can get Wilkins and Sons jam, and that that's just made me think of that. Hot pepper jam is really good too. Tin shed costume. I hate the new version of RP1. I can't figure out how. If that love heart would go, that'd be really great. It's it's cool that you can like like do this. I wonder if this will like actually show up like yeah there we go you, you, you can do this and this is my brain being weird on on low blood sugars right now um, <laughs> see my slow descent into madness um but yeah it also hides bits of the uh <laughs> hides bits of the chat so i can't see it uh creating mayhem in the vab tin shed exactly this definitely needs a bit of a color color job um so 2274 meters per second 15 tons i think this is okay but what i am going to do is get rid of those and make them a little bit bigger because they are very 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 small i had these ones last time round, right yeah it was these ones so i don't want those that was what two two one two three one two three one three eight two two three so i want bigger than that um maybe we go up to two seven five four four five that looks like it's quite big, 
But, you know, I've always liked things being big. The bigger, the better. Maybe. <laughs> that could have gone very, 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 very uh, weird very quickly then, but I'm going to avoid straying into um, territories that might get me demonetized from YouTube whilst I'm live streaming. I want these cool ones. I want these angled ones, you know, the ones that like look like they're kind of metally. Why can't I do the metal? Metal, why have you forsaken me? I guess we could go for this. Right? Yeah, I guess. Right, let's go for four. I've always liked things being big. The bigger the better. Can I say 2023? You know, since I've started streaming again, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe on the Discord, the, the, the channel I say funny things or is like Kanasa says funny things might actually get used again because it's not been it's not been used in a long time because I, I wasn't streaming so clearly I wasn't saying anything funny not saying anything funny in any of my videos or anything like that no I'm not a funny person I definitely feel like I'm oh no these these uh, deflectors have gone all, all wonky um yeah I definitely feel like I um, am funnier when I'm a bit more hyped which, uh, which is what I'm trying to do this live stream. I, I actually saw a live stream of me. Um, someone left a comment, a person called Benamin. They're not going to be here today because I think they said it's like 3 a.m. for them. That I sounded really different like two years ago. And obviously I am going to sound a bit different because that was two years ago. But I wanted to go check out like one of my old videos and see just what I sounded like. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah, I did sound quite a bit different. I, I spoke quite a bit faster and was a bit more engaging. And I thought... Recently, I haven't really been like that. Maybe I should do that again. Actually, like, talk just rubbish on streams. That's what I, that's what I used to do. And it, it, was, it was always nice. And I need to go back to that style because I like that style, MMH and NTO. Uh, we're going to go MMH and NTO. Yep, there we go. Bigger, bigger RCS, which is great. Uh, that is all fine. Good, 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 good. It gives me 4,611 meters per second of dust feet. I think that's uh, that's all right. Do you have a Discord, Kanasa? I do have a Discord. If there is not a link in the description to my Discord, uh, which there should be, because I, I should put it in there, that is something that I tend to do, but also the past couple of streams I have forgotten, then there will be links on most of my videos. I also think there's a link on my channel page. If you don't know about it yet, you, you can find links there. Or, alternatively, like, let's just, just get me up. Uh, <laughs> I've got this as well. Um, that's not, that's the wrong one. Is it, is it that? Oh, you can't even see it. Like if I, th there we go. I can put my head like in front of it. That, that's, 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 that's a link to my discord. <laughs> if you follow that, you will get, you will, you will get to uh, <laughs> my discord. Anyway, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's hide big webcam. Looks too much like the Saturn V lander. I suppose it is quite similar to the Saturn V Lander. It's using the same engines because I don't have any other engines really that I can use. I could use the Hydrolox engine and I might use that. But, you know, I just wanted to make a custom built one. And, yeah, it's it, the reason why the Saturn V Lander, the LEM, the Lunar Excursion Module, use that design is because it works. And because it's RO and RP1, trying to use designs that work, works because it's based on on real life <laughs> but yeah limited to only having the lmde and the lmae or this i mean i could use that but mm, i think this will be the better route to go but anyway we're gonna test this out i think i am a little bit more with it now so i can definitely fly this we're gonna simulate this around the moon Go for 100 kilometers again inclination of 30 yeah there we go this will be good I don't remember the eagle holding one person. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. Yeah, it, it did hold two. Buzz and Buzz and Neil and uh, poor Michael was left in orbit. Babe, wake up! Carnassus live. Hello, Planet Venus. Welcome. You should try that blue color you've been using. I, uh, I might. Uh, I've been using... Wow, I've frozen again. It does like to freeze a little bit. It does like to die when the game loads, which is a, a little bit concerning, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. I think it's just when the game is loading in, so I think that's the only <laughs> problem that I'll have. Uh, yeah, I've been using kind of like a Delta Blue colour for a lot of uh, my designs in this series, because I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And because this is... Wow, the whole game's frozen now. 
it do be freeze. Um, because most of this is made out of procedural parts, then I can absolutely colour in the vast majority of this. Right, let's fire this up. Let's uh, kill the throttle. Do this. Point ourselves. Oh, that turns a lot. Oh, that's way better. That is much nicer. I am much happier with that than, than I was. Right, anyway, we have got surface window and landing info up, so I am able to land, hopefully. I join your Discord. Thank you, Scosh. Welcome to the Discord. Babe, wake up. The banana is live. ADHD degrees, welcome. I'm not sure if you've been in chat already, but I, I remember you. Loading time, approximately 20 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully not. Whoa, what's that HUD? So, um, this, the ball at the bottom is Principia. Principia is like the mod that makes, you know, orbits noodles. And you can make some really, really cool looking things with Principia. It changes all the orbits. Uh, but the rest of the HUD, like the UI, that is UI Changer, which is quite a new mod. I think it came out maybe like six months ago. And uh, you can get different themes for it. So the theme that I'm using is called Z Theme. And it, yeah, it's, it's basically KSP in dark mode. I love it. It's, it's really great. I, I saw people using it for a really, really, really long time on Discord and thought, that looks really good. I should get that. And then proceeded to never get it. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's really cool. It is really cool. Right, we don't need to be moving 25,000 meters per second, though. So uh, this is another problem with using simulations when you come into, when you're using Principia. Like, it doesn't put you around Earth. It puts you around, no, it doesn't put you around the body that you're orbiting. It puts you around Earth. So if I wanted to simulate around Venus or something, it would be something ridiculous. But we are, all I need to do is just come in here and change it to Moon. And there we go. We're going about 1,628 meters per second, which is something that is pretty reasonable pretty reasonable orbit around the moon but we are going to fire up the engine and we're gonna trent to land oh my god look at the speed yeah it was it was very quick <laughs> what's aerosene 50 aerosene 50 is a hypergolic fuel it's uh, the fuel that was used in the Apollo CSM the the command service module is that what CSM stands for I can't remember uh, but it's used on the Apollo CSM uh, to power the AJ-350, I can't remember off the top of my head what the engine was that um, that, that used, but it was also, it was used by the uh, Lunar Module Descent Engine and I think the Ascent Engine. It's just a hypergolic fuel. Chat, give me an outrageous mission for my next video, for your next video. An outrageous mission, you say? Hmm... I think you should... I mean, what have I done that's been outrageous recently? I flew to Tylo on First Node Technology. Maybe uh, maybe do like a an ELU return using only First Node Technology. I'm not sure if that's going to be more complicated than landing on Tylo. It's probably going to be about roughly the same, I reckon, because capturing an ELU and then getting back from it, because it's so far away, it's, um, it's quite a lot of Delta V. It's definitely not something I was considering doing. I've, I've got a few video ideas for KSP2 that I'm going to be, uh, tro uh, well, attempting to do over the next few weeks. I've got a mod video that hopefully will be coming out on Friday. This Friday coming. I'm going to basically be spending all of my week this next week working on the next episode of Kerbal Gets Real Redux and some mod videos for Kerbal Space Program 2. It's going to be pretty fun. There's a, there's a lot of great mods for KSP2 out already. Dual 5 on only iron engines. My god, that would be super painful when crewed Venus landing, Carnassa. I don't know. <laughs> By the end of Kerbal Gets Real Redux, I swear. I'm not going to swear on that because there's a good chance that, that will never happen. <laughs> but... I don't know. I know TD Channel did it. I know he did a crude Venus landing. And, and there were definitely some hijinks that went on when he did that. But I'm not sure. I want to I wanna maybe go to, like, Jupiter in this series. But we'll see. Separatrons to orbit in RO. Oof. I know. I tried. When I did the Aerobees only. So the Aerobee is, like, one of the weakest. If, you, if you're not familiar with RO RP1, the Aerobee is, like, one of the earliest engines that you get. And I did an Aerobee to orbit only thing. And it was... Not fun. Um, but at the same time, I tried doing a Tiny Tim to orbit only, which is a very early solid rocket booster that you get. And I tried that. I was working on it for about maybe like three, four days. And it got to the point where I was putting literally a thousand Tiny Tims on each stage to just get like 50 meters per second of Delta V. And it was at that point that I decided I effed up and went away from that idea thinking, yeah, there's, there's absolutely no, no way, 
No way I'm gonna be able to do that. So uh, unfortunately I scrapped that video idea. Right, um, we probably want to kill Throttle. Uh, maybe completely? How many ignitions does this have? This has 20 more ignitions and my suicide countdown is in four minutes. Uh, right, yeah, I'm gonna kill the ignition for a little bit. How much Delta V do I have left on this stage? I, I'm, I'm talking a lot <laughs> over this live stream and I'm kind of uh, missing kind of like important things, you know? I should be really focusing on trying to land this on the moon. At least this is just a simulation. And if I kill someone in this, well then, poor Jeff, Mr. Blue Lin, isn't isn't gonna die in the actual save. It's it's just gonna be in this simulation. Sixty nine four twenty. <gasps> the double funny number. Then TD one up your beast to orbit by doing bees to the moon. He did. He did that very 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 soon after. It's like I think I landed a Falcon nine on the moon, and then TD landed a Saturn five on the moon. Very shortly after, like within a day, I think I published my video, and then a day later, not even a day later, TD had landed a Saturn V on the moon, and then I landed a Saturn V upside down on the moon, and then TD, uh, well, I landed a Christmas tree on Europa, I want to say. This was like three Christmases ago. I think it was the first Christmas my channel was a thing. I landed a Christmas tree on Europa, and then about maybe two years later, a TD landed like a, a 10,000 ton <laughs> Christmas tree on Pluto. Might not have been that much, it might have been a thousand tons. I know it was really big, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, no, uh, <laughs> we, we have a, a nice friendly rivalry every now and then. Did you read my rover requirements? I, I did, um, I did, I did, and I did talk about that a little bit earlier on. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that with these missions, and the reason being is that mass is at a premium, a, a real premium right now, because I'm really gonna to struggle to get anything more than just a single-bodied lander to the surface of the moon. I might, I don't wanna use the LEM. If I use the LEM, the BDB LEM model, then I could probably do a little bit more, but I don't wanna use that. I wanna completely design something and that is gonna make it heavier. Like if you look at this, there are so many redundant parts on this just to make it look somewhat decent or at least a little bit more interesting than just slapping a lander can and then a fuel tank and then an engine. No, I've gone for some greebles. I've gone for some spoinky bits and we've got some tubes. Like the internet is made of. This is, uh, yeah, this is definitely something uh, a little bit more interesting than, say, just slapping a lander can on top of an engine. TD launched the UK to the moon in his most recent video. I did watch that uh, <laughs> with, like, the fed up rockets. That was a brilliant, that was a, a brilliant video. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently not, not on Earth. I, I am live streaming to you from the moon right now because the destroyer sent me there. Like, he, he sent my entire country to the moon. <laughs> it's a really cool design. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I like doing, like, kind of, like, finicky bits like this in RO. Ever since I started For All Kerbal Kind, it was definitely something that, kind of, like, I got a lot more interested in. Uh, some of my designs in For All Kerbal Kind are super detailed. Like, I think my uh, blue streak and, kind of, like, the first stage of uh, my big orbital rockets in that series have something like 250 parts for, for like stage one because it's got so many different like tiny little procedural tanks dotted all over it uh, and I spent a good 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 long time. I know my Ariane which is probably going to come in the next episode of For All Kerbal Kind also uses an insane amount of parts and yeah, no, that series really made me get into kind of like thinking about like, oh, what can I do to make this look a little bit more interesting than just kind of like using one or two procedural tanks for a core structure. And then I got kind of like, yeah, like, oh, you can make really small procedural parts and you can use them to detail. And it, it looks really, really, really nice. And a big inspiration that I have from this is a channel called Calvin McClure. He does insanely, insanely detailed builds. Like, I honestly, I've I've known Calvin since before he started a YouTube channel because he used to post on the Real Solar System Reddit subreddit quite a lot, and I always saw his builds on that, and it was from that people were like saying, "Oh my god, man! Like they are so incredibly amazing! Like you should you should like start videos and showcasing like what you're doing, and it is it, it's great." 
honestly, he, he makes some really, really, really good stuff. Hey, people, I just woke up. Hello, Tea Time. Welcome to the stream. It would be funny if you land the rover idea in a separate mission for a base. Sorry if I annoy you. You're not annoying me. Legit. Legitus username? No, 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 no. Honestly, I like the suggestion. I really like the suggestion. Um, but yeah, I think um, because I'm trying to save on mass at the moment, like, I'm not cultivating mass. I'm not Mac from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, I, I really need to try and avoid, like, any mass gains as much as possible. Um, but a separate rover could absolutely be something I land. And because, right, it doesn't require... It, it won't need to be returned from the surface of the moon back up to, like, orbit. It, it's something that I could probably do on maybe a uh, odyssey rocket uh, which we saw fly for the first time in the uh, last episode the episode that came out yesterday yeah that, that is definitely something i could probably do on an odyssey because well if you look the lo the moon is littered these were all launched on odyssey <laughs> so i could absolutely probably land a rover separately trying to avoid any mass gains switches from hydrolux to hypergolic yeah i know hypergolic is way less efficient and way heavier but it also doesn't boil off. There is a good chance, like, I'm, I'm gonna have two separate designs, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna build launch vehicles around both of them over the course of this live stream, and we're gonna see which one kind of, like, wins out. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, you got me. You got me. <laughs> Thick lander. It is, it's, it's, it's like a, a knockoff, knockoff LEM. Hi, what is that UI? It is Z Themes. I swear I've said that about 50 times now. I need to put that in the description of this video. You should strap a Kerbal to the roof of the lander. Um, I mean, considering this is realism overhaul, that, that might go down somewhat badly. The, the, they, they might think that something is terribly, terribly wrong with, with that. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, maybe it's turned from realism overhaul into realism overhaulant or realism underhaul or surrealism overhaul. I can't remember the rest of the ones that I used in my uh, short series when I was doing... <clears throat> when I was doing the whole upside down rockets thing, every time that I did a new video, it was, uh, there, was an, there was another word for it. And I know... Oh, real, uh, real isn't overhaul was another one that I used. It worked in For All Mankind. What worked in For All Mankind? How it feels to chew five gum. You could do a rover Mars mission. I could do a rover Mars mission. I'm probably, I'm almost certainly going to be sending a rover to Mars at some point. Absolutely. Because, uh, well, Mars is, is, is like screaming out for, for a rover, right? So, so I burn countdown it is currently about one second. I'm quite happy with that. This seems to be way more accurate than it used to be. So Mechjeb suicide countdown was always a little bit off. But now it seems to be actually pretty much spot on. And even with this, right, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to have loads of Delta B left. This is seriously overbuilt. I could possibly make this weigh under 12 tons with hypergolics. Like, I'm going to see how much fuel I have left when, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, I have slowed down too much. I have slowed down too much. Oh, we're going to have to tip over. I'm going to see how much fuel I have left. Oh, did it. Right, yeah. Okay. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Oh, come on, come on. Vertical speed is still like 60 meters per second. Oh, that was bad. That was really, really dumb. Really dumb. Come on, there we go. Fine. We're okay. That was uh, not ideal. Not, not ideal. Are we going up? No, we're not going up. Right, let's uh, kill, kill Rot. 50 meters per second. Slow this down. Slow this right down. So I've got probably over 400 meters. Well, no. Maybe like, yeah, if I, if I did a better landing than that, I would probably have over 400 meters per second, which would be, I, I, could, I could get rid of loads of fuel on this. If 
funky music as we come down for a landing. Right. So, um, let's use this to like, just point straight up. And then use my RCS to correct, like so. Perfect. How much fuel do I have left? 324 meters per second. Going up, almost going up. All right, this is serious concentrating time. Oh, there's so much concentration going on right now. What's my um, altitude? 50 meters. All right, go that way, 2.1 meters per second. This will be fine. Smart ASS. Smart ASS. Smart ASS. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in chat at the moment. I, I'm, I'm too busy trying to land a, a very, very, very expensive lunar lander on the surface of the moon. Um, right, let's uh, go. Oh god, that was way, 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 way too hard. It's really difficult seeing anything with these glasses on. It makes things... Wow, everything became way bluer. Is this what normal people look like? What normal people see like? RTGs are stored in the tin shed. Exactly. How much delta V for an ELU orbital transfer? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but you can look up delta V maps and they'll tell you pretty, pretty well. Hello! Hello, Plantoffel! Welcome to the stream! Nah, that was way, 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 way too hard. <laughs> oh dear. Have I said another thing that I shouldn't have done? Probably. Especially when I was talking about I liked things being very big earlier on. This live stream has been all big, all hard. It's reminding me of Austin Powers. Welcome to my submarine, Mr. Powers, as you can see. <laughs> if anyone's watched the Austin Powers films. I actually watched all three of those again recently. Um, they, uh, they, they somewhat hold up. Anyway, we have landed on the moon again. And for some reason, <laughs> my, my engine was looking a little bit wonky. Look at that 64K lunar texture and the sun over off in the distance. This is this is perfect. So I could deactivate this, right? And I could see how I do. So if I shut that down, see how I do with just this stage? See if that's going to be enough to get me back up to orbit. I've got 2,419 meters per second of delta V left. And I kind of guess this is a little bit like how like the Apollo landers did it in real life. Uh, they, they didn't use the bottom stage to propel them. They left them there. Hi, Kanasa. Hope you're well. Hello, Paul Sidhu. Welcome to the stream. Um, I've been better, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, earlier on in this stream, I did have a little bit of a, of a diabetic wobbly. It was a, it was a bit of a wobbly moment. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've got, I've had a cold for like the last week and it means talking like this on live streams has been quite difficult and sending my diabetes all like, woo, all over the place. It's, it's crazy. Blows up the sp spacecraft with mind again. Oh no. Austin Powers is the most advanced movie franchise ever created. <laughs> you know if Calvin is making a plane tutorial? I don't know if he is. I know he wants to, um, because I keep mentioning him in my videos in the hopes that people go and check out his channel, because he's great. We started YouTube at about the same time, and he, he, he creates some amazing cinematics, like, like mind blown. Really, really, really great cinematics. Calvin McClure is, 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 is a genius. Um, and yeah, I, I always want to send uh, over more people to him. No, because it's real solar system. Uh, are you going to build the lunar injector too? I will. We will. We will build the translunar injector or translunar injection at a later bit, uh, uh, later uh, uh, later on in the stream. But anyway, we're going to try sending this to orbit. Right. So throttle is up. I just need to hit space. Where is my 90 mark? My 90 mark is there. I'm going to go for kill rot and we're going to go. Ah, look at us go! It's so slow! <laughs> oh, it's one of the speediest things I have ever seen. Faster than a speeding gazelle. Speedier than a speedy cheetah man on steroids cheating after a cheaty cheating thing. I lost track of where I wanted to go with that. But yes, it's a baby speed, thrust away ratio 1.000001. I think, yeah, probably about that. What is my TDR? Oh, well, it's, it's like two. It is two. It's, it's not terrible. Speedier than a fart. I am speed. It's baby speed. It's very, very, very quick. This lander looks oddly familiar. I mean, it's 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 somewhat of a 
somewhat like the lem, but 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 not quite. It, it's got a, it's 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 the baby lem because we can only fit one Kerbal in. Uh, currently, it's Jeff, Mr. Blue. Uh, if uh, can we put some like graphs up? Target target management. No. What, what can we do here? I don't think I've scanned the moon. No, I haven't. So we don't get maps of the moon. That's a bit unfortunate. Can we get my like attitude up and I'd like fly it from here? Yeah, we we, we can have a look at that. Oh look, moon. <laughs> nice. Um. So does this tell me my apogee? Um. Mode surface radar altitude. No, it doesn't. Uh. What if I go? I don't want vessel viewer. Can I, like, change this? Does one of these show me my... Or my Apolloon? Orbital velocity, 275 meters per second. Defective... <laughs> detective baby legs. <laughs> Best YouTuber period. Thank you, thank you. Don't forget the tin shed. How much dev do you need to ascend from the moon and back to Kerbin? Um, dot V. Uh... From, 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 like, the moon in normal KSP, you need about 650 to get from the surface of the moon into low moon orbit, and then you need about another 250 to get back to Kerbin, uh, if you air a break on the way back. This is a quite a cool shot. Um... But in RSS, you need about 2,000 meters per second to get up to lunar orbit, and then you need about 800 to get back to Earth. Where's the Thinker 3 rocket? Thinker 3. Kranasa with 64k texture maps don't work, sadly. Oh, do they not? Ah, oh, that's a shame. I have the 64k texture because look, the moon looks beautiful. Look at all of that texture. There is so much texture going on right now. Paul Sidhu, thank you for the two pound donation. Thank you very much. Right, so, um, yeah, I never saw, I never found. My uh, altitude is still going up, I guess, but we are like, because my prograde vector is there, it means we are getting quite close to going down. Um, I, I did want to see, is there any way I can see my apogee? Like... Oh, what, what's this do? Body, moon. Uh, we're over the Sea of Tranquility right now. Scrubber, those are resources. Oh, we can see the nav cam, so we can see our... Maybe if I... There's, I'm sure there's a way. I am absolutely sure that there is a menu on here. For the transfer stage, you could have a crew of two couples instead of three, so you can make a sweeper rocket. I am considering doing a Gemini, or Gemini. I don't know how it's pronounced. I would say Gemini, but I'm, I'm fairly sure in everything I've heard it pronounced as Gemini. Orbital velocity is about 780 meters per second. Am I just blind? Like, press all the buttons. Target management. Right, let's open one that's not had anything opened. Attitude, graph, target, auto, vessel igniter, docking port alignment, indicator, nav. Ah, there we go. There we go. My apogee, or my apple apps is 31.3 kilometers. I, this is so cool, flying in IVA mode. I, I really like this. This is definitely something that I want to do more of. Is altitude your AP and radar altitude your actual altitude? So, altitude is my current altitude, I think, because, yeah, my, my APO is 36 at the moment. My orbital velocity is one kilometer per second right now. Um, and, yeah, we, we've still got a ways to go. Time, I'm assuming that's time to APO apps. Yeah, so we can get that down. I can pro I can't throttle this down because it's only it's it's uh it's not throttleable. Right. Still got like it would probably be even funner to fly it like this, right? I've got nothing now. All I can see is these controls. Not Gemini, Gemini, because it's the Latin plural like classify. See, I I would I've always called it Gemini, like but. When watching like For All Mankind and whenever hearing anyone else stream that ever mentions it, they all say Gemini. 
And I, I think the first time I heard it was hearing an N9 stream, and I was like, that sounds so oddly weird to me. Imagine playing this with the VR headset. That would be insane. I would really, really, really enjoy that. I don't have a VR headset anymore. I did, I did used to have one. Um, but yeah, that, that was, that would was, be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. I played like one game on it, which was The Forest, and I stopped that very, very quickly. Um, I think if I put resources on this one, Oh, there we go. Look, I've actually got, I've got like a map up now. Maybe if I put resources on this one, uh, I want my Apple apps to be maybe about 100 kilometers. Look, we can see where my orbit's going. Time to Apple apps is like 11 minutes. Let's uh, kill the throttle there. And I want to see if I can see how many resources I've got left. I know there is a resource menu somewhere. Autopilot. Can I put this on standby? There we go. So resources are there. So we have 22% of my aerosene left over. That doesn't seem like a lot. Love the stream. Thank you, Alex Oct. If any modders are here, we need a VR first person KSP mod. I'm fairly sure there is. I'm fairly sure someone has made KSP in VR. I think. But I, I'm not entirely sure. We'll, uh... Because, yeah, like I said, I, I did get it. Well, I did have a VR. I don't anymore. And the only game I really played on VR was Beat Saber. <laughs> Beat Saber was fantastic. I, I like rhythm games like that. I've always been a massive fan of Rock Band. Rock Band is uh, a really, 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 really fun game as well that I played an awful lot of. And I still do. Right, so I've got 11 minutes, right, until I hit my Apple and there we go. Oh look, it's the giant crack in the moon again. Moon's cracked. Like, look at that, it's like the, the biggest mountain range just running down the surface of the moon. What does it mean? What does it mean? 23% sanity left. I think my sanity was at 0% a very, very, very long time ago. That's, that's, that's kind of like very uh, generous. Generous. Oh no, it's really raining outside. I don't know if you can hear that over the live stream, but it has just started absolutely tipping it outside, which is a little bit unfortunate because I need to go out later on because I'm going to be celebrating New Year's, New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Eve today. I hope everyone's had a great 2023. And I hope everyone has a really good 2024. I'm really looking forward to 2024. I'm very excited for things to come in the new year. 2023 has been a bit of a weird year for me. So I'm, I'm like, I'm 100% sure, like, yeah, 100% sure 2024 is going to be a lot better. And I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, my plans for this evening, just play some board games with my family. Really looking forward to that. After this stream, of course, this stream, I think won't go on too long today due to the fact that I do need to get to my mum's house later on. But she doesn't live too far from me, so I reckon I can go. I, I think I'm eating there at about 6 p.m. my time, and it is, what, about half three now? So I've got time. I've got time. Definitely got time. Right, so we are about a minute away from Apogee. By, yeah, that 25 seconds. Right. There we go. Let us move this to here. And look, oh, God, that was a bit too aggressive. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's line it up there. I don't know if Ullage is a thing. Uh, so I'm just going to press H for a bit in the hopes that I do have Ullage. And we're going to fire up the engine. There we go. Engine fired up. And let's see. Oh, I reckon this will be a good orbit. All right, I'm going to like slightly raise myself. 100 kilometers. Oh... There we go, 100. 100 by, oh, that's not a bad orbit. Considering I flew the vast majority of that in IVA with like the HUD hidden, that's um, it's pretty good, 104 by 105 kilometers. Look at that, we made it to orbit, nice. I'm playing modded KSP as well. What are you doing in modded KSP? Hi there, hello, welcome, great. 
what is that series of numbers legit username i i'm i'm not sure what that what that that means or what that is i haven't showered since last year new year for me <laughs> what what you haven't sha i would highly recommend you go take a shower sir <laughs> i can't not shower like if, if i if i get to the end of two days without having a shower i feel i feel sticky and horrible oh no no you've made me uh <laughs> that's, that's uh, made me feel deeply uncomfortable oh possible possible yeah thank you it's raining a lot where you are too unfortunate yeah this, this is gonna suck because i have to go out <laughs> anyway pretty good orbit pretty good orbit let's uh leave iva mode and see this thing i i quite like this as a design i like the top of this i think i'm gonna stick with this definitely for the upper stage whether i stick with the bottom stage yeah that that's that's a lot to I'm, I'm not sure and i still have 600 meters per second of delta v right that is going to be more than enough for me to do a rendezvous in orbit i i think this should be fine so now i think because i've done that what i'm going to do is we're going to design probably like the the whole rocket that's going to get it to space we need a command module as well i might have a look at the d2 parts or the gemini parts and we're also gonna maybe yeah design the, the rocket to get it to space so we're going to revert to the vehicle assembly building but i'm also going to quickly go have a quick break for like five minutes i've been streaming for an hour and a half i'm sick my voice is going i want to chill out for a minute and then we'll be back and we'll work on translunar injection and a big, massive behemoth of a ginormous, ridiculously large rocket that will send all of this to space. But yeah, thanks for coming to the first part of the stream. I'll be back momentarily. Until then, yeah, I'll just leave you with some chill music in the background. Like, this is very chill music. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Anyway, be right back.
All right, and we are back. And I got, <laughs> I got two notifications from the subscribers there because uh, I changed the uh, the overlay in the middle of that. But hello, welcome back to the stream. Right now, we're gonna be working on probably like the command orbital module that's gonna stay around. I think I'm gonna try and go for a Gemini design, but we'll we'll, we'll see what we get to. And uh, we're also gonna be doing like translunar injection, and then maybe at the end, see if I've got enough time to actually design the rocket that's gonna get this all there. And there are a few things that I need to think about when designing this rocket because I want to try and use like engines that I've already unlocked in RP1 because it's going to cost me a lot of money in order to buy new things but there are definitely going to be some new engines that I am going to want. Like I, I probably want something like the J2 if I'm going to be honest because that is a, an absolutely fantastic engine. It is the dry man, no shower. <laughs> Pretty sure there is, google it. What? Come to Belgium, just stay outside for a while and you'll be good as new. What's this? <laughs> what? Go take a shower. Yes, I can get RSS now. I saw, I think I, I was having a look at the chat when um, when I just went away and uh, did you say that you were on Mac? Because you can definitely get RSS on Mac and you can get CCAN on Mac. There is uh, a DMG for it and I know this because I used to play, like there's a, you, you, you can see my Mac in the back there. Uh, it's what I used to make music on and all of that. Um, but I, I tried installing RSS on that when I didn't have my current setup and uh, it ran terribly. That's like a, a 2016 iMac, I want to say, and it ran, it, it definitely ran, but it ran very, very, very badly, um, to the point where it was almost unplayable. Uh, probably newer Macs are a little bit better. They are, they are probably a little bit better. It would be fun if you try to make it reusable. Unfortunately, like with our row, it's like reusability isn't really like, that big of a thing. I might try and do some reusable things later on, but right now, uh, making something reusable just means I need to make it bigger and heavier, and it's just going to be added mass that I can't really afford to, like, put, because I'll need to make a bigger rocket, and that will mean that I need to build a bigger launch complex, and that will cost me more money than I will save in making the launch complex, like, making the vehicle reusable, I think. My god. I tried the same on mine, but it was running horrible. Yeah, I think I got it just to about run, but it really wasn't, really, really, really wasn't great. Anyway, so I'm quite happy with this lander design. I've got a couple of them, like I've, I've got the Hydrolox one, and I've got this one. I think I'm not going to remove any more fuel from this. I think where I am right now is, is, a, is a pretty good kind of like standard. I get about 600 meters per second of delta V when I get to orbit, and I have about 400 meters per second to avoid any sharp, pointy, jagged rocks when I try and come down. I don't think it works on the M1s and 2s. Fair. Reusability isn't really a thing in RP1 right now. No, I've done reusability in RO once, which is when I did the next millennia. And that, that was actually kind of fun, and maybe like at a future point in this series, like I might do it just for style points, not actually do it for you know, any sort of gains, but it, it would be quite fun. Um, I was also thinking of reusability for all couple kind as well. Uh, someone sent me like some really crazy like designs of uh, Ariane um, and like some British designs that had some weird reusability things and like winged, winged designs like the Ariane boosters having uh, wings on them so they would uh, fly back to uh, the launch pad, and that was something I did have a little experiment around with, but I'm not sure if it's really going to be something feasible that I'm going to be able to do because I don't have anything like FMRS on that save, and Flight Manager for Recoverable Stages is definitely something that you really kind of do want if you're going to be trying to reuse first stages. I have an M1. When I tried RP1, I used the Hydrolox version of the Titan engines. They seem better and have three restarts. You mean the LR87 LH2? I think, do I have that already? It's great. This thing is wonderful. I really like this. It's almost as powerful as a J2, to be fair. I know in the old Kerbal Gets Real, um, I'm, I'm middle mouse clicking these, expecting it to zoom in. I'm so used to KSP2 right now. Uh, yeah, if um, in the old Kerbal Gets Real, my moon, my first lunar lander mission, uh, crude lunar lander, actually used these as a kind of like core stage. And I, I might have a look at that again. Because uh, that was definitely something that was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool to do. Right, so 15 tons is definitely enough. Uh, I, I think this is all absolutely fine. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, right? And then I'm going to make a new 
vehicle. Swampy New, I'm new to programs and complexes, but I have a couple hundred hours in RP1. Is it generally better to always take breakneck pace programs? I don't know. I think yes, because you tend to be able to get the funding. Thank you for the donation, by the way. Um, you tend to be able to get uh, the science, like if you pick up something breakneck, you, you should be able to do it as long as you play your science right. I think that's really the limiting factor because you get the funding, you, you get the same amount of funding, but you just get it quicker so you can do things quicker. However, in this save, I have been struggling to pick things up at breakneck. Like, I think I've done Crude Luna at fast speed rather than breakneck. Um, I've done a couple of breakneck ones, but it's just getting the confidence to be able to afford to take things at breakneck is a, is a little bit harder than like, the further you get in the career. But yeah, only if you can complete it in time. I've not gone over a time yet. I don't know what the penalty is, but I know obviously you're losing out on funding if you do it that way as well. So that, that is definitely something else that you want to consider. If you, if you can't do it in time, then you're just going to be missing out on program slots. And I think you do actually get a penalty to um, to your funding, like you will lose money if you roll over the program time. So that is, yeah, something else that you actually do need to worry about. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna save this and we're gonna start something new. I know this is, this is about 14.4 tons. So I wanna see if I could do an all in one first. 14.4 tons, and because it's only a one man lander and I already have the Jiminy, Jiminy, Jiminu capsule, because uh, I, I, I totally haven't used this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely not used this. But we also have the Lunar Gemini as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Like, if we uh, look at this, it's shiny. And you can actually recolor this, I think. Can you recolor this? Yeah, you can. Look. So I, I, I could make this blue if I wanted to, which is what I have been flying for a lot of my missions. Look at that. It's great. And I can make it metallic and add some detail, and add some shiny, and, and it's super shiny. I really like this. This will cost me a bit more money to get though, and I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. So, if I wanted to buy this, I can't get it at the moment because I haven't unlocked that tag. But this costs 9,000, and the original Gemini costs 7,500. This is 1.37 tons, this is 1.37 tons as well. Slightly lighter, ever so slightly lighter. I don't really know what the difference is. Uh, that has got 1,073, 2,000 Kelvin. That's got a lot less. Hmm. Fourteen point four tons is quite nice for a lunar lander, but it is also only a one crew lander. By time warping to the present, when you boot the game, hang on, Gemini L has a blater and can take the heat better. I was thinking that might be why, because, yeah, the the heat is, oh, and it, yeah, 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 you are right, it does have uh, re a blater resources on it. I think I'm going to try with the Gemini L. We'll, we'll have a look at this and see what we can do. And I'm going to go for Lunar, because hopefully we get a Lunar-rated heat shield. Gemini Lunar heat shield. There we go. Can I recolor this? Uh, no, but that's fine as is. Right, so let's go for Gemini and see if there is a way that I can make this work. So one thing that I might have to do on that Lunar Lander that I've got is change the probe on top of it to be... A Gemini probe. Now I know you're not really supposed to do crew transfers through those, so we might have to do the way that um, the Soviets were intending to do, and do a little bit of an EVA. We'll go from the Gemini capsule to the lunar lander capsule and, and do it a little bit janky like that. And then future missions to the moon later on in this series will maybe get a little bit better, a little bit more advanced hardware. So if I go for the, I need the reaction control, not that. I need there should be somewhere not not that not that there should be a Gemini like control system I don't know why all of this is showing up when I type Gemini I, I just want the Gemini parts please please yeah yeah I might need to change this uh, on top of the lander so I can actually dock to it uh, but we'll, we'll do that Gemini re-entry control system then there should be a parachute that goes on top of this uh, not that one should be Gemini main parachutes somewhere. Where is it? 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 
Oh, this is really difficult. Like, like you're probably all being like screaming at me like now. It's right there. It's right there. Isn't the mission going to pay off itself? I mean, if you're talking about this mission, then yes, it will. But getting the funding to begin with is going to be difficult. Where is the parachute? Right. If it opened in the text window, open it by right click and open with command prompt or something like that. I don't use it. Oh, you're still talking about so you can search Ge Gemini. I have, I have, look, I have, I have, there's, there's all of this. Oh, this is the, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. And then we want the docking mechanism and then we want this there. And there we go. And then, yeah, that 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 is the top of uh, Gemini Luna. Lovely. Right, so. There is a retrograde section decoupler, so that's going to decouple my next section. And then I think I'm going to custom build this. So we're going to go for a hollow in stage ring, which I'll put there. The top of Gemini is, I think that's about, is it 2.5? I want to say it's about 2.5, and then maybe we'll go for 3 meters underneath. So height, we'll do that. And then I'm going to come in and do this. And I think... I might use an RL10 for this, as the, like, CSM. I think I might use an RL10, because I love RL10s, and I've already unlocked it, so that would make things a little bit cheaper. Right, can I get back to the Gemini, and can I do this? So, if I go to the docking port bit, where is it? Where am I looking for? I, I want the, kind of, like, docking the, the female part of the docking port which is there yeah i can i can put that on top wonderful because what i want to do is come into here and put a dummy weight on this i don't know what that is a service module that doesn't matter i'll just do this tank ui and we'll fill this up with lead so i knew that this was 14.4 tons so this is going to dummy the lander so 14.4 tons means I need to bring this down to about there. There we go. Now that is a dummy payload for the lander. And I think what I want to do is make this a little bit higher, maybe maybe even a little bit higher. So it's kind of like, you know, like smooth, smooth angle. That would be that would be very nice. If we go about there, there we go. Lovely, lovely smooth angle. And then I need to get myself if I come into avionics, we'll put one of these on here. And then I think I'll get all of my resources like food or water, oxygen, all of that can like hide away, be tucked away in here. If I go, uh, I've picked up the wrong payload fairings. Go for those. Uh, I want these to be conic. Iconic. And we'll come in and I'll change them to Atlas Recolor because I like the Atlas Recolor. Kanasa, wouldn't it make more sense for a white capsule for thermal reasons? Um. I mean, I can change the colour of this. Like... There we go. <laughs> and just like that, we have made it white. Impossible. Last time I checked, Seacan doesn't support 64 bits. Does it not? You forgot the cap thing. Um, I will add that eventually. Like, we will have that, but right now I need the dummy payload on top. But yeah, I know, there is, there is the Gemini cap. I, I saw it multiple times. It is not that I, I don't need to do that right now <laughs> that, that's just that's just wasting time so i want to make sure that this is battery all the way up and we're going to put this as a diameter of three and i think if i look at this right let's move this up what is my current avionics usage uh three and a half tons so yeah the the gemini capsule really can't do an awful lot so we do need these avionics and i'm gonna want this to be deep space because we are going to need to perform maneuvers around the moon and this is something i probably well i've unlocked I, I reckon i'll have at least mature avionics right what is I, I shouldn't show my management because that's going to be spoilers for the series um but i should have definitely this by the time that i go to the moon i imagine and yeah, that's something I didn't check in the old Kerbal Gets Real, and that's how I killed three Kerbals in that series, uh, by not having Deep Space Avionics. Kanasa, how you made Seacan work on Mac? Uh, with great difficulty. 
Uh, it didn't really. It, you can, it sort of does work. I think I talked about it in my funny how to install RP1 video. It does work. You can get CCAN on Mac, but it, it also likes to freeze and crash a lot of the time. So I think actually the way that I got RSS on my Mac was I installed it via CCAN on my PC, stuck the game data folder or stuck the entire Kerbal Space Program folder into a USB stick and transferred it across that way. I'm sad. I'm playing KSP right now. Well, why are you sad if you're playing KSP right now? Um, what's the visual texture pack? Like like the HUD, that's a UI, UI changer with Z themes. Am I playing KSP1? I am playing KSP1. I am playing KSP1. Well, finally watching KSP while waiting for KSP to load. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. This save, this install takes about 20 minutes, I want to say. 25 minutes to load. Right, anyway. Okay, so that's Deep Space Avionics, right? I want the controllable mass on this to be probably like at least 30. At least 30 is probably going to be even more. And we're going to want to go for isogrid structure. I think we'll go for a three meter diameter. Maybe get this to be about four and a half meters. Oh god, I clicked off. Then I want to go to structural and I want to grab myself, if I can find it, a mount. Because I do love mounting things. No, 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 that's another thing I shouldn't have said. Um, yeah, ignore that, belay that, belay that order. No one heard a thing. Right, there we go. And then we can get like a nice mount for this. We could go for a centaur mount or centaur. And, but I like the LDC dual one. Th this is like my favorite mount. I'm probably going to maybe make this look a little bit better at a future date, but right now I'm fine with this looking like this. Now, if I get an RL10, right, I, I'm fairly sure that this won't be able to take what I want. This is going to be way too small. So if I go for an engine and do that, Right, so change to that RL10, which is the best configuration that I have at the moment. What delta V does that give me? 1,672. Right, so I need... That's enough. That is enough. That is actually fine. I think I need probably... I, I, I reckon this will be be good. So it's got a rated burn time of 1,750, right? So I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of like figuring out if I can uh, capture at the moon with the lunar lander attached to it, which is what this is signifying. Uh, so it costs, what, about 850 meters per second to get to the moon. So 1364 minus 850 will leave me on about 500, right? Right? So about there. That was very quick maths, but I think that's probably about right. Now what happens, how much fuel do I, yeah, yeah, that's, that's way, 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 way more than enough. So I could actually get away with this being even smaller. What I might do as well to make this look a little bit better, because this does look a little bit ridiculous, is if I do this and I make this a cone and the top is like three meters, the bottom is like 2.5, because I'm fairly sure I have 2.5 uh, meter tanks tooled, but I might be wrong. So that's another thing that I do need to consider as well, is like tooling the tanks to make sure that I'm using like similar ones that I've already done. Oh, wow. Um, I accidentally scrolled up on the chat. Sub Karnasa, hello, Mr. Duck, how's it been? It's going all right, it's going all right. How does boil off work in RP1? Um, I don't know the ins and outs of it in particular, but I know that if like the more surface area something has, the more stuff will boil off. If you put multi-layer insulation on, it c dramatically cuts that down. If you have like 50 layers or 25 layers of MLI as well as radiators on, yeah, like boil off's not a thing. You don't have to worry about it anymore. How do you get that cool UI? Is it mod? It is a mod. It is the UI changer mod. I really need to put that in the description because <laughs> everyone's asking about that at the moment. Anyway, I want smooth cone and I want this to be straight and. And then I want to come to Isogrid. I want to get another one of these. Maybe make these about 2.5 meters. 
bring this down to about there and then it's a little bit smaller and we're basically making Orion. <laughs> well, something very, very, very similar to Orion, right? We're gonna put RL10, fill that up. That gives me 924 meters per second of delta V, which is not enough, but if I fill that up, that gives me about 1,000, I probably want about 1,200, I reckon. So we go for about like that, something like that. Thank you for the subscription. Why can't we send the moon to us? I don't know, because the moon's quite heavy. If we wanted to send the moon to us, we'd need a very, 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 very big, very big engine. One that is probably the size of, like, the great estate of Texas. Maybe even bigger than that. And it would need to be firing constantly for 30 seconds, which is a long time for an engine to be firing if you're the size of Texas. Also, Kanasa, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm the one whom called you handsome in that KSP2 livestream. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know about that. Your, your eyes may deceive you. That's why I hide behind the glasses all the time. Like, handsome me? Absolutely not. Are you going to make something like the Saturn V or are you going to make something different? Um, probably something different, or, or at least I'm going to try. We'll, we'll see how that goes, though. Right, so this is hopefully enough. So if I get rid of 850 meters per second, 1149 minus 850, so minus 50 is 110. That leaves me, what, about 300 meters per second? So if I get this down to 300 meters per second, which is about there, take that off. That's enough. That's enough. That is enough. This is enough. So I need to send 26 tons to the moon. I need to send 26 tons to the moon. It's a lot. It's a lot to be sending to the moon. Don't tell me the KSP will take one year to load, literally. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, depending on where you are, it might, it, you might like start it up and it loaded load in next year. I'm sure TD channel could do that just like your mum. Way! <clears throat> yes. Are you going to make something? I already read that comment. Wow. Try the UDMA uh, locks RD23 and RD24 configs. The problem with using like those engines at the moment is because up to this point I have been pretty much American except for the RD100s and the Gammas because you know Gamma is life. Uh, so Unlocking Russian engines right now means I have to spend an awful lot. But what have you suggested? You suggested the RD 253. 253. Do I even have that? Do I have that? I've also been ignoring that line in the tech tree, so I've only got the very, very, very basic ones. 253 and 254. I don't think I have those at all. Unfortunately. Looks like it's uh, it's going to be a no. Once I calculated that it would take about 80 million black arrows worth of thrust to lift France. <laughs> I feel like that is something that the UK would do. <laughs> we, we were like, France? No, we've been bitter rivals for many, many, many years. You know what? We'll build 80 million black arrows and we will launch France to space, to the moon. Maybe like a smaller and cheaper N1 rocket. Maybe, I, 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 I'm not sure what I'm gonna go for yet, but one thing that I do need on this stage, right, is, is definitely, we're gonna need some fuel cells. Um, we probably only need one. Yeah, it looks like we only need one, um, which is great. And I think what I want to do is have like a structure in here to accommodate all of this. I don't really want to go structure procedural. I want to go for like isogrid, I reckon. Isogrid tanks, because they are going to weigh not very much. So if I go for like something like this, 150, and then we whack this on here, and then I make this a hollow cylinder, and we make something like, something cool looking in here, I reckon. We go for this, maybe make this a little bit bigger, put length, down and then we get that on there we get this and then do this come up poke it up like so i can probably make this a little bit thinner uh what was that as a subscriber thank you zumek for subscribing to the channel 
That sounds like an entirely sensible use of resources. <laughs> I'm assuming that was in response to the 80 millions worth of black arrows to send France to the moon. <laughs> yes! Yeah, like, we're definitely not struggling, like, at the moment with, uh, with, with all of, like, the cost of livings and all of that. No, no, we, we definitely have enough money to send France to the moon. I think I'm gonna maybe make, like, eight of these and make a little bit of a truss and get that there. Pull this up like so. I could probably have just done a better payload design than this, like a, a better interstage adapter, but, you know, it's nice custom building things and we'll, we'll, we'll get that there and on the inside of this we'll get if I can fit it on the inside it doesn't like this I think I'm gonna put two two of these on like so and that should be hopefully more than enough fuel cells there we go get those in there like so and then in the interior. So I don't really like having food stored in places where you're not gonna be able to access food, but we, we, I might have a look at this and see if I can get away with having food maybe like elsewhere, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna put food yet. But water and oxygen, I'm quite happy putting in here and like imagining that, yeah, we're gonna run it through pipes up to uh, the main section of this. Hmm, yes, Britain. <laughs> As a French person, please don't lift us into the void, thanks. Okay, I won't. I mean, I already have been lifted into the void by TD. Like, he, he sent Britain to space. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I am live streaming from the moon right now because Fed Up delivered the, the United Kingdom to space. Remember me from the other stream? I do. You were also here at the beginning of this stream, or I saw a comment from you uh, before the stream even started. Dude, KSP only loaded at loading asset bundle definitions. Maybe install too much mod. It's just KSPIE. KSPIE is a is bloated mod, though. There's a lot in that mod, which is why I much prefer Far Future Tech. KSP FFT. I, I, I infinitely prefer that mod for kind of like cool, funky engines like that, because it's not as bloated as KSPIE. Is BDB a good mod? BDB is a pretty good mod. It adds um, a lot of like real life stuff, which is really cool looking. Like they, they do a, a very, 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 very good job of uh, making some real life looking stuff, right? So I want to have a look. What have I got? Food. I've got 28 days worth of food. Uh, that's not right. Uh, well, we know George is still alive now, up until 1965, and hasn't retired yet, so a bit of a spoiler for the series. <laughs> um, but yeah, I need to check and see. So I've got three days' worth of oxygen. I've got 14 days' worth of food. Why have I got that much food? 14 days. It takes, what, like five days to get to the moon, five days to get back, four days in orbit. I probably want a little bit more food than that. But I can't really fit any more. Oxygen and water, I definitely need more. But I've got 220 days worth of water, so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to make a small service module tank. Maybe make it a fillet cylinder. And make it... I want this to be as small as possible, really, because these things are incredibly expensive to tool. Uh, probably make that, like... Oh, where do I want this to go? I'm not entirely sure. Is that my cat coming in? I think my cat might be trying to sneak into my office. Uh, we'll go. We'll go for something like this. Whack this in here, like. Oh god. Oh god. Something's gone wrong there. Something's gone terribly, terribly wrong there. Um. Hmm. Movement. <laughs> That's all I can think of when I hear this song. This is the song that I used for the Tylo first node lander, and that, that bit was just me in incredibly tired. I don't really know what I was thinking when I was making that video, if I'm going to be particularly honest. It, it was one of uh, one of my videos of all time. It was a, a little bit of a strange one. Right, and yeah, I think if we get this... Uh, to kind of like match up to where that pipe goes in like that and then I then I can pretend that this pipe then goes off and I can put another pipe up there and then it that's how we get our food and water um, right so what I want to do is to make sure that I am putting in enough food and oxygen and water for the two Kerbals there is a very 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 handy thing which is this thing 
and I can come in here and I can put fill Kerbalism, life support, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there we go. And now I have uh, a lot. <clears throat> 18 days worth of food. So that's four more days worth of food. That's not enough oxygen. So I think what I want to do is probably remove the water from here because I'm going to have enough. Maybe bring the food down to like 10. I don't think I need much more than that. And then update, right, remove the oxygen and, and just add, add, we add more oxygen. So I've got 18 days worth of oxygen in there now. That's a little bit better, but maybe, maybe, maybe I could do with a bit more. I, I don't think I really want to be around the moon for 18 days. I think that should be fine. I don't really think I need any more than that. And that should theoretically still mean my Delta V is fine. Right? Have I... No. Wow. Oh, it's because of these. I was like, where on earth has all of my Delta V gone? But this thing weighs like a lot. And there's two of them. Yeah, it weighs like 10 tons each. Oh, five tons each. Check your food. Can I sell? Would it be wise idea to static test of engines on RP1 to build reliability or is that a bit cheaty? I don't think that works. Um, if you static fire engines whilst they're still attached to like launch clamps, then you don't get any data from them. I'm fairly sure they thought around that and have implemented it so that that doesn't actually make anything better. Um, but you can try it, but I'm fairly sure, yeah, that, that doesn't actually work. I might need a little bit more fuel than this because I need to add RCS to this. I've got fuel tanks, uh, well, no, I say fuel tanks, I've got fuel cells, so that doesn't matter, right, if I take this off, yeah, I've got <laughs> a friggin' loads of Delta V there, um, what I want to do is get rid of all of this rubbish, right, get rid of the, how do I get rid of this? I don't think I can, without clicking, I have to go back in here, uh, there we go, click on that, and then I want tanky wipe, there we go, good, I have got rid of it. Mashed potatoes, I feel like smashed food though, pipes are probably not that appetizing, no, no, I, I, I don't think they are, they're probably much more likely to have a nice meal in here, and then when it gets to kind of like the end of the mission, when things are looking a little bit bleak, and we've got Mr. Blue, and we've got George Edwards kind of like looking at each other like ravenous and then suddenly like this goop just like flies through a pipe into the Gemini capsule it's like pfft. and suddenly they're like we're saved liquid goop my absolute favorite <laughs> to be fair like mashed potatoes are amazing I will hear no bad against mashed potatoes that they are like one of my all-time favorite things to make so easy to make tastes really good goes with anything Bang is a mash, jobs are good. Chicken and mash, great. Chicken pie, put mash on top, bake it for a bit, fine. What else can you have, like like Sunday dinners, great. Nutrient paste, yummy. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess that is like nutrient paste. Nutrient paste is basically soil and green though, isn't it? I've not actually seen that film, but I, but I know of it, right? So where is my... Ah, yeah. No, no, no. I want my center of mass. My com. Where is my com? Com be there. So if my com is there, I am going to want probably not those. Maybe like these. And these are angled, right? So they are going to shoot off up that way a little bit. Um, yeah. Because I want these roughly in line with the, the center of mass so I can translate with them. Yeah, I think I think that's all right being there. And then I need to make sure that I can actually use them. And I think I'm going to go for MMH and NTO again because that's what I'm using on other things. And if I come in here, maybe get this up to high pressure, fill it cylinder somewhere. Get this down to a diameter of about three and one, and then fill this with MMH and NTO. And I'll get these, I'll, I'll get these coming off here like this, like so. If I offset these in ever so slightly, 
And then it looks like I've got kind of like these, oh god, <laughs> these coming down off there, like so. And then I can put these in and I can attach these on there, roughly in line with the center of mass. I think that should be fine. We'll make the length of that a little bit longer, bring that down a little bit, make the length of that a little bit longer, bring that down a little bit. Now it's just like I'm repeating myself. Oh wait, maybe that is because I just did. Uh, yeah, we get that like that, and then get this to about here. Yeah, there's extra angled ones. There's extra angled ones. Yeah, the... have I not picked the extra angled ones? No, maybe I didn't. Right, so those are too big. I probably want these. So I don't want to be moving too quickly. And if I turn these around this way, yeah, like so. There we go. It's going to make fore and aft movement a little bit more challenging, but it's not the end of the world. Right, so we go for that, and that's got MMH and NTO in, and this is starting to look quite ridiculous. But it will work, I'm hoping. Let's see what my delta V is looking like now. 1109, so if I get that down to about 250, so about there, about there. Right, and then I take this off. Ooh, that's close. That's a little close for comfort. I want to make that, oh God, make that a little bit more because that is that is really pushing it. That's really pushing it. I think I maybe want this at about 1,200. Uh, what are we currently weighing? 26 tons, I guess. I probably don't need this much. So if I maybe get that down to about 50, this was one of the songs playing when I did a X-Plane section in one of the videos. Yeah, if I get that to about there and then maybe make this, so we can burn this for a little bit longer. I might. How much is this gonna tool? Oh, maybe I don't have 2.5 damage tanks unlocked. So that's gonna be expensive. Like if I tool three meters, Tooled already. Oh, I liked the idea of maybe having this a little bit come in, but I think in order to get over the tooling issues, I think the best option is literally just to have it all at three meters. That's sad. Oh well. It's ruined my design! It ruined my design! How dare it! I can't believe it's done this. This has now made me incredibly sad. But that gives me way more than I need, and I'm gonna go for about about there, I reckon. Bring this up to the center of mass again. Get rid of that. Come on. Where's, where's my com? Give. Why is my com all the way up there? Oh, because this is. Oh, it's because this is attached on there. Yes, that would make a lot of sense. Kanasa, don't forget the golf stick. No, we can't be playing golf on the moon. I can't even get around knowing that Kanasa is doing a lunar landing this early in the series. I mean, it's 1965 right now. There we go. Uh, 7th of April, 1965, I'm doing this design. So uh, I, I'm, I'm still quite a ways off of this in terms of where the episodes are. How many seconds of RCS burn do I have? I don't actually know. Can you see that? Is there a way of seeing that? Is it in Delta V stats? Or is it in uh, RCS build aid? I don't think it is, which is a bit of a shame. Right. Put the hydrazine in the service bay next to the food. Also, now you can use the less angled one. That is very true. That is very true. Yeah, we will do that. Um, if I make this a little bit different, maybe make this about five by seven, and then we get these underneath here, like so. We get that. One really annoying thing is, as well, right, I'm going to use Hydrolox here. Uh, by the time I go to the moon, I'm probably going to have 25 layers of MLI. I think that's a tech that I'm unlocking very, very... I don't want to uh, spoil my tech tree. I think that's a tech that I'm going to be unlocking very, very, very shortly. 
Um, but I'm not going to be able to test the MLI on this, which is a little bit of a shame because, like, I can't I can't move the slider up at all. Past one, so that's going to be a bit annoying. M Mech Jeb Delta V starts, click engine, and it changes to RCS. <gasps> what? Where? I I don't. I, I don't see it. I do not see it. Unless, do you mean like click on the actual RCS? Because um, that, that might make a bit more sense. You must have an older version. Maybe. I've not got the RCS on here at the moment though, so that might be why. I don't want those. I want these. Right, so we get four of them. So if I go MMH and NTO, which is what I've got, 5.5 tons, then I want to fill this up with, no, that is already full. That is already full. Whack these on, back on, and then grab this on. 1,200, yeah, about 1,200. This is good, this is good. Uh, that could be why. Um, but yeah, no, it, it doesn't look like, unless, no, I, I, it doesn't look like I do get them. That's a bit sad. Right, I want to get rid of the fairing decoupler on there and move the mass density all the way down. IR10 series, not extendable, blah, 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 blah. Yep, 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 that's all good. That can all go up there. I think that's fine. Right, this is going to hopefully look a little bit better than this <laughs> at some point because... Right now, this looks very, very ugly. I'm probably going to detail this, but I'm probably not going to do that over the course of this live stream because I want to get the basic design all done right now. The dev version is what you're supposed to use for RP1. Maybe I... yeah. I've just got the version that came with RP1 Express install. I didn't actually select to get the dev version of MechJeb. That is something that I probably do need to get. Uh... You can make the food tanks in a different colour and put same coloured pipes leading into the Gemini capsule. That is one thing that I was thinking of doing. The only problem is, if I do that, when I decouple this, there's a chance that that may cause explosions. So usually what I do, I, I, I will recolour this because it's all like one boring colour at the moment. Food tanks, I always go for blue. Like, always. I've always done it so I know exactly where they are. Um, but yeah. So I think I think that should be fine. I think I think that's um, right. My lunar lunar command test. There we go. Save. Right. Ideally, I want to be doing a, a TLI to the moon. How am I going to do TLI? Funny thing here. I just finished my moon lander in KSP, and the top of this craft reminds me of it. Nice. Uh, if you use the Engineer Redux mod, it gives the RCS spread out too. I know, I need to get the Kerbal Engineer Redux uh, fork that works with RP1 because I really, really, really like Kerbal Engineer Redux. It's great. It's like, gives you some really useful information in the flight screen, which MechJeb is missing. Like, I, I really love it being at the, like, top either side of the altometer, but unfortunately, like, yeah, I've, I've not got that, and I need to get that. Just calculate manually RCS time. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this should be okay. I, I think, I, I always overbuild. I've put five there, haven't I? I have. Oops, don't want five. That would be very dumb. Right, there we go. That's fine. That's all good. TLI. How am I going to do TLI? And I'm not going to launch, like, I'm going to do, like, kind of, like, petal adapter here. So I think if I go for, like, a five meter long one and then the top is three, if we get this like so, then what I want on here is going to be a decoupler. Uh, because I need a decoupler in order to decouple the lander, which is going to be tucked away in this like petal adapter section. Where is procedural decoupler? Where is procedural decoupler? There. OK. 
Okay, let's get you on there, and I'll make that as small as possible, because less mass is good. I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to open up. If it lets me, looks like the game's going to crash. No, 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 KGRR. Let's go into here. KGRR, Moonlander attempt one. Let's merge this. Get the Moonlander out. That looks good. The fifth one's a spare. <laughs> we do enjoy a bit of redundancy, and this is really annoying. I, I want this to go on there. Um, and also, right, so I need this to be bigger than this. So I think maybe I'm going to make the base size like 5.5. Mm. Can I change the like root part? No, I can't. What if... Also, I need to change that. If I pull that off... Let's pull in all of that off. If I pull that off... No. What does... Mm, this is annoying. I'm also creating four of these at once, which is not ideal. It might be better, it might be a, a better plan to go to this craft save file and build and copy this across. If I make this the root part, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that. All right, so if I save this, make this the root part, and then go, let's save it again, go to that one that I just built and then bring this across the other way. This might be a little bit better. If I pull that off. <laughs> God, why has this stream been so innuendo, innuendo, lots of innuendo. Reroute to the engine. Um, I couldn't reroute though. Oh, oh it's missing a part, it's fine. If you really think about it, Starship does an outboard cutoff. An outboard cutoff. At least I'm playing KSP1. I'd like. Yeah, actually, no, I've not live streamed KSP1 for a really long time. The last live stream I did for KSP1 was Farewell Jewel. Hi, Kanasa, glad I can catch the live stream. Just watched that other guys the other day. That other guys the other day? What other guys? I, I might be confused, but hello, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. I am getting tired now. <sighs> oh, I need to carry on though. I can't stop now, I can't stop now. There are things to be done, things to be built. But I am getting a bit confused over reading chat. <laughs> and you might notice that earlier on in this live stream, I was a lot more energetic and slowly over the course of the stream, like my brain is melting. So we're going to do that because for some reason these change every time I load them in. Then what I want to do is come into here. I do not want to save this. I want to go for, I think, was it like Moonlander? Or s no, s command. Luna command test, there we go. So now if I merge this, because I've rerouted this, there we go, wonderful. And that is gonna be what this looks like, right? I can get rid of that, I don't need that. Go away green. Uh, but I do want to change this here. It's a con hollow cone in there. I wanna change this to this. Yeah, I guess that can probably stay there. Maybe I can bring it down a little bit. Like that. Just so long as it's not clipping. You absolutely can stop now. Don't chase your losses. <laughs> you can reroute piece of craft that are not attached. Can you? I, I tried doing that. Like, so I, I pulled up the craft reroute and it didn't do anything. It, it, it didn't do anything. Add spare LH2 in the stage for boil-off, yeah, I, not, not just for boil-off, but another thing that we'll be using LH2 is these, because these are going to be using hydrogen, hydrolox, blah, blah, blah. they're going to be using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in order to basically uh, blah, 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 generate power. That's the words that I was looking for. That that was a really long way, winded way of saying generate power. I might have to go for six meters for this stage, which is a bit of a shame. This is a very wide lunar lander. It is a wide, chunky boy, and it does not want to be contained by my small little thing. 
my small little thing. I've had big hard things, <laughs> long. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what, what am I? What am I doing today? Right. So we can get this. I want this to go to about there. Top is going to be three meters. Yeah, like so. And I'm going to make this conic because conic is iconic and looks better on stages like this. And then finally, we're going to go for an Atlas recolor. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I would probably want this to be even wider. So I think the S4B is six and a half meters, right? I can probably also maybe move these in a little bit. But this is going to be a, a whole, whole thing. If I move that in, because then I need to move this in and move that across to like there. And then move that. Oh no, and it's attached to this one. Oh, goodness gracious me. This is not going well. Just try and get this a bit more space. I'm going to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. I have watched that video far too many times over the past couple of days. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it's so funny. <laughs> right, and then I'm going to need to move this in. And I'm going to need to make this a little bit smaller. Like so. And then I need to move these. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of movement going on here. Lots and lots and lots of movement. Uh, move that into about there. I'm probably going to have to completely redo this in a minute. But, you know, this is why before I started this stream today, I wanted to uh, have this... This kind of like stuff all done, moving moving these bits around. Yeah, that, that looks like it's kind of wrong. Congress is requiring Carnassa to be very conscious on reusability. Oh no, space! <laughs> I can't stay, but I hope everything's going well so far. Yes, everything has been going pretty well. I, I think it has been quite successful so far. It could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> it, it could have gone much worse, right? So I think this is fine. Um, Auto shape, I'm going to turn off. So if I get the start to be in the end, in the end, to come down, like to about, right, yeah, now we're starting to clip through there. So if I get that to about there, maybe, I don't think it matters if this clips through this side. We'll, we'll get a bit of leeway there. That's still six and a half meters, so that's quite big. But we'll, we'll go for something like that. And then if I move this extra height up a little bit to about there. Yeah, there we go. And then what I want to do is turn battle adapters on. And then we can open it up. And look at it. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I love this. <laughs> I can imagine the pilot pulling, piloting this craft to hit the moon, to the moon, while screaming, while screaming SPACE at the top of the lungs. I'm doing sim test of a sounding rocket, and the heart's in the way again. My apogee was 98 kilometers. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. You need just a, a little bit more, just a, a touch more, in order to get to that all-important Kármán line, which is 100 kilometers. but there we go. We, we could do something like this. Then, I need... 3,150 meters per second of delta V in this next stage. And I'm also going to need another avionics. Right? Yeah, we'll, we'll need... Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, no. What? <laughs> Why did that end up there? <laughs> oh, yeah. I would rather not have this six and a half meters in diameter. Um, purely because that is going to be so friggin' expensive to tool. But, this is a Moonlander, and, you know, when in Moonlander, do as the Moonlanders do. Oh, I don't like this. I, d I really don't like this. This, this is probably going to be something that I come back to and design completely again, isn't it? But, you know, I thought I'd get the start of it done on the stream, at least. Uh, we make this, like that big. So this needs six and a half thousand meters per second of delta V. 
No, no it needs 3,200-ish meters per second of delta V. Um, how am I going to do that? I mean, I could just make, you know, the S4B, right? Whack a, whack a J2 on it and call it a day. Uh, we only need one ignition. If I fill this with hydrologs. Oh, God, are my levels going low again? Yeah. Uh, that also might be why I'm struggling a bit at the moment. <laughs> Overburn five more seconds. I mean, overburning with test flight really isn't that much of an issue. I always find overburning is fine. Like with test flight, it, it doesn't really seem to bother you. Test flight, it was bad. Like test flight would kill your engines very, very soon after you started overburning. But if you do it with test flight, it's like there's there's no issue whatsoever. Try the Titan LH2 engine. That might be a that might be a good suggestion, and it's also something that I was thinking of using on the first stage, as a, kind of like a core cool stage. Subscriber received. Thank you, Throin. Throin or Thron? I can't really read that. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, uh, yeah, that looks a little bit peedly, poodly, pathetic. We can change it to the vacuum variant though, which we do unlock with improved Hydrolox engines. One sec. And then, if I remove all tanks there and fill that up, that gives me 5,000 meters per second of delta V. So I do not need anywhere near that much. We need, <laughs> we need like that. We need probably like that. Four minutes and 56 seconds, which is within its rated burn time. And that weighs 110 tons. Heavy boy, it's very heavy. So I'd need to make a 110 ton launch vehicle. Hmm, it's heavy. I could probably make some adjustments to make this bit lighter. Like, this is going to weigh a huge amount. Like, this weighs 1.3. These fairings are going to weigh an awful lot. I could possibly do something a bit weird. Like this. <laughs> That's it's very weird looking. But like the smaller this is, the smaller the fairings become. I don't know. I just had a horrible idea, a crude sounding rocket. Quite a lot of people do do that in RP1 when you unlock like the um, first kind of X1. Rather than doing X planes, they'll, they'll just send crew up on a sounding rocket. I, I did that the first couple of times I played RP1 because I had no idea how to build planes. So I was just like, you know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just like yeet them up on a sounding rocket. I think I need to uh, think about this design a little bit more because I I don't think this is really working. Six and a half meters is required. It might need. What can I do? 110 tons is a lot for one person to land on the moon. They'll need a very heavy LV, like Saturn V style size LV. Uh, I know, I think I'm gonna have a think about that. And I think I'm gonna call the stream there for now because once again, like my blood sugars are dropping. It's, um, yeah, like look, low, low glucose, bad, bad. And it's meaning it's becoming very hard for me to think at the moment. And I do need to get ready to go for a New Year's Eve party as well. I've been streaming for about two and a half hours, which is a bit shorter than I'd usually like to do. But I need to, yeah, I think I need to go away and have a little play around with ideas. But I think I might stream more building this. If people would be interested in seeing that, I'm going I'm to have a little play around and then probably do some more streams of uh, the design and maybe simulating this before I actually fully finalise it. So let me know if you'd like to see that. But... Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it there. 
because I do need to sort my, my life out. Get that blood sugar up. Happy New Year. But yeah, no, thank you everyone for coming along to my New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day stream if uh, you're in over like in uh, New Zealand and Australia. Hope you all have a fantastic New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And the, yeah, you all have a fan, like brilliant, brilliant 2024. But this will be my last stream for 2023. It's going to be lots more content coming in 2024. I've got some things cooking up. I'm very excited for it. But thank you, everyone. And hopefully, one thing that I really wanted to do by the end of 2023, and I don't know if I'm going to do it, it's, it's going to be really tight. It's hit 30k subs. Um, last time I checked, I needed about 40, I want to say, before I started this live stream. It was, it was between 40 and 60. I'm very close. Very, very, very close. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. But we'll see. I might hit it. If, if I don't hit it today, I'll probably hit it tomorrow. But yeah, 30k for 2024. Happy New Year Day thing. Happy New Year and take care. Thank you everyone for coming along. And yeah, no, it's been a great stream. I'll carry this on at a future point. But until then, I've been Karnassa. And I... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm being attacked by the glasses now. Yeah, I've been Kanasa, and I will see you later. Thanks for coming. <laughs>